twice for a total of 16 hours at $2,000 an hour. Do the math. They want to win this million-dollar bonus. Let's go to Speedway Illustrated's Dick Bergeron. Yeah, but to win it, they're going to have to beat Dale Earnhardt Jr. During driver introductions, this audience went absolutely berserk when his name was mentioned. He is the favorite. He has won three of the last four restrictor plate races. He's smart. He's cool. He's extra good at places like this. To Matt Yoakum. Dick, the last time Pontiac won a points-paying race at Daytona, Ronald Reagan was running for re-election. Tony Stewart has two Budweiser shootout victories, but remember, for tonight, he's racing with a couple of unknowns. He only completed two laps back in the Daytona 500 with engine failure. They've gone back to their 500 notes without any final practice session, but they're still unsure how those notes will react tonight because they only had two laps back in February. Mike? Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR, is proud sponsor of the Bud Pole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at every NASCAR Winston Cup race. Kevin Harvick is a first-time Bud Pole winner, and he joins these other drivers in the Bud Shootout of 2003. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than seven million bucks as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award Program. Let's move to our Walmart starting grid. Kevin Harvick, first pole, and Jeffrey Bodine in only his third start of the season, former Daytona 500 winner on the front row. Jeff Gordon, two-time winner of this race. Robbie Gordon, no relation, looking for his first restrictor plate triumph. Dale Jarrett has four Daytona wins. Johnny Benson, top ten in February, led a lot of it. Michael Waltrip, four top fives in the last six restricted races with his teammate Steve Park and his teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr., who we've talked about right behind, along with the fastest dodge in the field, young Casey Atwood. Veterans Bobby Hamilton and Ricky Rudd looking for his first Daytona triumph. Mike Wallace with Bill Elliott, a four-time Daytona winner. Kenny Wallace and Jimmy Johnson the pole winner, fastest qualifier back in February here. Brent Bodine, ninth last July, and Mark Martin, one of those no bull million bonus cars. Ken Schrader has 20 top tens at Daytona, and Sterling Marlin, the point leader. Bobby Labonte, fifth here last July, and Kyle Petty, fresh off that 3,500-mile charity ride. Mike Skinner won both Daytona poles in 97, and Todd Bodine, who competed last night in the Bush race. Jimmy Spencer, who won this race in 94, leading only the last lap. And Ricky Craven, another no-bull car. Shauna Robinson, the only female in the field. And Kurt Busch, who was fourth in the Daytona 500. Tony Stewart, just two laps in February here, but he has two top tens. And Dave Blaney in a Ford. Elliot Sadler, third here last July after starting 38th with John Andretti in a Petty Dodge. Stacy Compton's Pontiac and Hunt Strickland's Dodge in row 17. Jeff Burton, the 2000 winner of this race, and Terry Labonte, two-time series champion. Then the provisional starters. Rusty Wallace has not won Daytona in 38 starts, maybe tonight. And Matt Kenseth, another no-bull car. Ryan Newman in the same car. He raced to seventh here. And Jeff Green. Ward Burton, the Daytona 500 champion, had trouble with the cowl intake in qualifying. He's there with Jeremy Mayfield, a pair of Dodges. And last night's winner, Tonight, he's last row, Joe Nemechek, an unexpected spot, but he anchors the field. 43 cars, 160 laps, 400 miles, 100 miles less than we race in February. Yeah, and the pit window is 50 to 55 laps. You can make this on two stops, 160 laps. You want to be full of fuel. You don't want to be out there and have to pit on the green by staying out and not pitting. Tires are not that critical, but they can definitely make you handle better. Oh, yeah. If I get an opportunity, I'm going to come and get me four tires almost every time. There's our weather. A lot of rain here yesterday, and that was what ruined any chance of final practice for these cars. When they practice before qualifying, they do it one car at a time so that their runs are not wind-aided by the draft of another car. So they have not been out there in anger amongst groups of cars in practice. In fact, not since they were here in February for the Daytona 500. Lights out atop the pace car as we get set to go racing. Those of you just joining us from baseball on Fox, welcome to Daytona International Speedway, where the Pepsi 400 is about to go green. Oh yeah, and this is the this is the tenth time 
It's when the crew chief is talking to the driver and he's telling him, now be patient here. And the driver's sitting in there all fired up and got fire coming out of his eyes. And he doesn't hear, he can't even hear what the crew chief's saying about being patient. I'm not going to talk to you after we take the green flag. Very little. I'm going to leave it up to that spotter because I know you're going to be out there in packs of 20 cars running three wide. Pull your seatbelts tight one more time because we're going for a ride for 400 miles. That's right. Besides that, I don't have time to talk to you. Can Jeff Gordon get his first win of the year? Can Johnny Benson get his first win ever? Can Jeffrey Bodine from the outset pull, pull off an upset? We're ready. You're ready. And here they come. And we're coming down here, folks. Got them tight. Got them belts tight. Flagman's got that green flag in his hands. Here we go, folks. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Boys, take her down in the first turn. Start of the race in the 24 car. He looked like he almost got knocked below that yellow line. You heard Jeff Hammond in the pre-race talk about the out of bounds. You can't be below that yellow line anywhere around this racetrack. And the thing about it is, you can't be patient if you're middle of the pack back. You've got to get up in there and get after them because you want to get with some cars that are fast. Two wide, middle of the pack, three abreast in the back of the pack. This is the eye of the storm. That's what you got to watch for right there. That's where the action is. And, and the, this racetrack is wide enough to run three wide. It's wide enough to almost run four wide on the back stretch. The problem is on the exit of the corners, it's like running into a funnel. The racetrack narrows up. Here they come as they exit off the corner. And what happens is the cars move around. When there's this many cars around each other, the wind is buffing the car around. You're three wide. The wind catches the front of your car, lifts it up and into the car. The outside of you, you go. And the longer we go in the run, everybody's on fresh tires right now, full of fuel. The longer we go into a run, the front end will turn less and less on the exit of the corner. That's when you get in trouble. And what you'll find right now is all these drivers will work with each other right now. They'll squeeze up and let you in because they're all packed up there together. But as they start to spread, spread out a little bit, you can't do that. Tony Stewart, who completed only a couple of laps in February due to a blown engine, spins to the infield in the back straightaway. Caution. Caution is on the speedway. Now, gentlemen's agreement, we do not race back. There's no rule that says you can't race back. But you can hack a bunch of guys off if you I try to pass them. Tell this back. <laughs> and here they come, racing down here like the, like the green flag's still out. Kevin Harvick leads the second lap and passes under the yellow flag, and the field will slow from 180 down to 70 miles an hour. And now what? Where Tony Stewart only ran two laps because of losing an engine. Here he's wrecked before they even get to lap two. Now what happens here is because some cars did pass with that yellow flag out, You'll be driving up beside a, a guy and shaking your fist at him, pointing your finger at him. Let's see what happened here. Wow, he just turned right. Looks like the car got down on the maybe down on the apron there just a little bit, and the back end came around. Perhaps repairable damage. Perhaps not. Oh, he got hit. Yeah, there you go. Was that Jeff Burton behind him? And that's Matt Kenseth in the 17 car that he, they got together as well. I, I was starting to say that he almost had to get hit from what we saw initially. Trouble, that's, that's what happens when you have to start near the back of the field. Let's ride with Tony Stewart just in front. Uh, he never knew, uh, he didn't know what happened. He never lifted out of the throttle, he was minding his own business. Got run over from the back. Now, Larry, the damage looks repairable, but these cars are massaged so much in the wind tunnel, don't know if he'll be competitive. Now, there's Stewart to the left as you ride with Sadler. Yeah, Sadler was trying to squeeze in there. He got into the 17, bounced off him over into the 20. damage on Sadler's car as well. I mean, this is a car that finished second in the Daytona 500 in February and third a year ago. But and yeah, arrow is so important here. You want to keep that front end. It has to stay just as clean as possible. We have some of the guys at the back of the pack taking advantage coming to pit road. Ricky Craven comes in, Kyle Petty, Elliott Sadler, of course, with damage, Jeff Burton in the 99, and Matt Kenseth in the 17 as well that we saw was involved in that with Tony Stewart. And I don't care how minor it looks, uh, Mike, when these cars crash at 190 miles an hour, uh, it's a lot worse than it looks. Uh, some of it's cosmetic like this, but you do chassis damage as well, particularly well, uh, if you get into the fence. An airliner takes off at, what, 160 miles an hour? Would you want to take off when one that had damage looking like that? <laughs> no thanks. 
Here's I think they're going to take Tony Stewart, the 20 car, behind the wall, but you better believe these guys will go to work on this car. He comes in here fifth in points, and in the last six races, he scored more points than anybody on the circuit. Speedway, this is MRN Radio. Yeah, he, was, he had to be considered a pre-race favorite, but Daytona has not been kind to him this year. Out early in the 500, and now here he is out already in this race. Stewart left Daytona in February, 43rd in the point standings. And he has climbed to fifth. They were trying to push the car, and it just was so much damage, you couldn't push it. So caution out at lap two. Welcome those of you joining from the Dodgers Cardinals game. We're at Daytona International Speedway for the Pepsi 400 and we're under caution at lap two. Elliot Sadler and Tony Stewart, last year's runner up for the Winston Cup Championship, colliding on the backstretch. Both drivers OK. Damage to both cars. Stewart behind the wall. Sadler stays in the race. Larson. Linda will be down in a second. Hi. Nice caravan. Thanks. I used to have a van. I can't believe my dad let you drive the Viper. Yeah, I, well, I got into him. Dodge Caravan, offering a power sliding door, a power rear hatch, and the kind of room you'll really dig. <laughs> Let me handle this. Mark can be very persuasive. No, Piggy, I want to do this my way. What? Dale, I know it's not that easy being you. Oh, brother. And I sure don't want to tell you what to do. You're blowing it. I believe we should all follow our own dream. Oh, for the love of... And that's why I think it'd be terrific if you just... <laughs> just waste the truck, Jarrett! Take him down and back, please. Oh, now that's a beautiful creature, Tom. No doubt about it. This one has got champion written all over him. This could be the year for the standard. Hello. Oh, dear. That's definitely going to cost him. Sign up for Singular Nation and never pay long distance, never pay roaming. Plus, get 3,500 night and weekend minutes. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life. The first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines, Max Life conditions use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. And for a simple way to keep your tires looking great, use Eagle One Wet Tire Shine. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by the joy of Pepsi, the choice of Victory Lane by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Walmart. Always low prices. Always. And by Singular Wireless. Never pay long distance or roaming again. It's a singular nation. Welcome back to Daytona. Hallowed ground, victory lane. That's where Tony Stewart wants to be. This is not the way he wants to get there. He's behind the wall after being involved in a crash with Matt Kenseth and Elliot Sadler. Here's what happens, Mike. Here's the 45 car up here. He gets up high, he gets shoved up out of the groove. Here comes the 17 back here. He runs up on the back of the 45. He's got to get out from behind him. He starts down. The 21's there. They get together into the 20 goes. The 21 car, he bounces off the side of the 17 car. There's your Rick. Steve Burns. Well, Mike, they're pretty confident they can get this Pontiac back in the race. Crew Chief Greg Zipanelli saying they're going to try to replace the nose, a partial nose, the right front of that Pontiac, and get Stewart back in the race. Fifth in the points coming into this race. A great comeback after running only a couple of laps 
in the season opening Daytona 500. And, but Mike, that's what happens here. It, it usually thing is because somebody has to get out of the throttle and the other guy doesn't or can't in time to keep from running in the back of him. Takes an evasive move, usually causes a wreck. You saw the damage to Matt Kenseth's car. He's sporting a new paint job. A lot of commemorative paint jobs here tonight. As Kevin Harvick has led all of the five laps so far. Green flag, green flag. See the Fox tracks there. Kevin Harvick ran on the slope. The restart started off about 55 miles. Oh, yeah. There's cars running all over each other back in the pack here because of that terrible restart. Kurt Busch locked up the brakes. That was the smoke you saw. I think some cars got some front end damage. I, saw, I think I saw a couple of guys bounce off each other. There you see it's going to be about 145 miles an hour entering turn one. Now, you will not reach potential speed with the restrictor plate. You almost run a full lap, lap and a half. Remember, they're wide open all the way around this racetrack. Harvick brought them down so slow here to, the, to take the green that it bottlenecked everything up, backed everything up. A bunch of cars are running all over each other. He should be about 70 miles an hour. That's just what the pace car speed is. So he was about 15, 20 miles an hour slower than the pace car speed. Back when A.J. Foyt was racing, they called that a Texas restart. <laughs> There's a lot of names for it at the short tracks around the country, Darrell, as you well know. <laughs> Dick Bergeron on Elliott Sadler, who's involved in that crash. Well, Sadler finished second in the Daytona 500. His crew chief is Pat Trison. How badly wounded is the car in tonight's race? Uh, it's not real bad, but, it's, you know, for Daytona, it's bad. It's a motorcraft quality parts. Got a little fender bender there on both sides, so we had to work on both fenders. Uh, got them the best we could for right now. We'll just have to see if we can hold on to the draft here for the first 20, 25 laps to get us that caution and uh, work on it some more and try to make it a little better. All right, thank you. Tonight, Yoko. Well, Ricky Craven also pitted under that caution for a possible tire of it. Now, Mike Beam, do you have a possible engine problem? I don't know. He said it just wouldn't go here at first, and, you know, we thought maybe something's in the cow, but it wasn't. You know, it run a fast lap right there, so hopefully we just come from the rear here and, you know, make it a good night. This team is chasing a million dollars tonight, 13th in points. It could be a huge night for the 32 team. At the front of the field, a 10-car breakaway, and it includes all three cars of Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, which come in here as the favorites. And they were single file for about almost a lap. And when you're single file in the draft, you will pull away from cars that's running side by side because they're back there disturbing the air for each other. But all of a sudden, these guys decide they want to start racing. If the other group gets lined up, they'll catch them in a hurry. Yeah, it's hard to get away. You might get a little gap like we see now, but it's hard. There's a car up high going into turn three. Behind you. It's Johnny Benson. Boy, Benson. Stay up there. Stay up there. Hold it up there. Can't. Don't come down. Everybody gets oh man. Got another car down, smoking down, coming off down. the corner here. Okay. Caution waving as they come to the line. And the car That's smoking Kenny is Schrader. Kenny Schrader, Benson's teammate. The 36 car. Yeah, that's a, I think it looks like an oil leak on Schrader's car, like an oil line. The oil pressure is still good. Oil pressure is still good. He's got Something an oil line. Something came off Johnny's car when he had problems. Something came off of Benson's car, he says, and must have punctured an oil line. Now, I, I believe all of this havoc we're having here, this mayhem, is because we've had no practice. These cars have not been on the racetrack together like this all weekend long. And NASCAR, they, they're going to give these guys a caution after they run about 20 or 25 laps to adjust their car. But right now, we're only getting about two or three green laps of running. Did, did you call the driver and tell him that? Because they don't <laughs> act like it. But how ironic and how unpredictable in this race that teammates go out in the same corner. Benson in the wall, piece off his car, hits his teammate Schrader. Guess what happened here in February? Piece off of Michael's car. Oh, he got, he looked like he got turned. That's Johnny Benson up against the wall. In February here, a piece off of Michael's car cut down Dale Jr.'s right front tire, teammates. That looked like, I'm not so sure he didn't get some help getting up there like that, Larry. Yeah, that, that, there you saw the Schrader on the bottom, and there's Johnny Benson. Of course, just been back two or three races after being injured back at Richmond in a Bush Series race. And broke a couple of ribs when he hit the turn three wall at Richmond. And going into the third turn there and get a little, get hooked though, like he did and turned up into the wall, that's going to hurt. He's stunned. Let's have another look here. Yeah, they're coming down the back here. There, there's Benson right there in the 10 car. He yeah. moved up. No, nah, he didn't move up. But Whoever the that, car right there got into his that, right rear. That car moved down. I don't know why, but uh, something caused that car, the outside car, to move down. That's 
Kind of hard to tell who that was. But somebody clipped him in the right rear. So Benson, who led a number of laps in the Daytona 500 and might have won it, one of several drivers who had a chance to win, is out early tonight. That's, that's the same look he had when he got out of the car at Richmond, Mike. Schrader on pit road with the hood up with that damage from the Benson crash. Bobby Hamilton there. Hutt Strickland goes by. Stacy Compton, Jeff Burton, Kyle Petty, and Terry Labonte are all on pit road. dans la ville, ils ne sont plus très loin de la ligne d'arrivée, deux grands champions Bornet et Stiefel se battent l'un contre l'autre, ils sont en tête mais qui va gagner Bornet, Stiefel, Stiefel, Bornet, c'est très indécis, ah ça y est, la ligne d'arrivée est en vue, c'est Gordon, je n'ai jamais vu une course aussi excitante, Gordon, mais c'est James Gordon, James Gordon dans le match, Chevy Monte Carlo, wherever there's a winner circle, we'll be there. Insider Pizza from Pizza Hut is back and better than ever. Now with free extra toppings. When you buy the Insider for $10.99, you can get extra toppings or make it a meat lover's or supreme absolutely free. The Insider Pizza, $10.99 and free extra toppings for a limited time only at Pizza Hut. In most cases, rent center delivers whatever you want the same day. Furniture, TVs. Dog on remote. Now get select items and add another item for next to nothing. Call 1-800-205-2005 for rent center Hey, I like this stuff. Hey, Kenny, thanks for setting up this workout with the WWE Superstars. Yeah, suggesting they help us toughen up for the next race was a great idea. Did I say tough enough? I meant tough enough. Hi, girls. <laughs> I hope you boys took your stacker twos because it's going to be a long day. You know, stacker two really does give you that extra boost of energy. And it helps burn fat and crush cravings. If the boys are getting tired, I've got some Stacker 2 in the car. Stacker 2, it's the world's strongest fat burner. I need the number for a Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Honey, where do we keep the... Oh, my. This isn't the chocolate I sent you for Valentine's Day, is it? Oh, look at that. Huh. You never opened it? Oh, my. <laughs> This never happened. One more lap to clean up the second caution of the night. We'll go back to green flag here in the Pepsi 400. Well, here's what happened. Here's, here's Michael right here. Michael's coming down the outside. He feels like he's going to get hung out to dry. 31 moves up, and here comes the 10 to go with him, and they collide. The 10's moving up a little. Michael's moving down a little. They come together, turns Benson into the fence. I mean, one was definitely moving up, one was coming down. Exactly, and they're just trying to get in the preferred line, taking up the same real estate. Now let's go to Jeff Hammond for an update on Tony Stewart. What they're trying to do right now with Tony Stewart's car, the reason why they brought it behind the wall, is he hit so hard, it has taken all these uh, support bars and pushed it in over close to the radiator and really messed up the shape of the far as the front nose is concerned right here. Right here you see the support bars on our car. All these bars were crushed into the radiator, so they had to get these bars cut away to be able to bring the nose back out. And the reason for that is, here at Daytona, like any super speedway, you try to keep this aero shape right here to make the car more aerodynamic so it can run through the air, make good downforce, make the car where it's got some speed. One well, other thing has happened here is because of the front end so much damage, the air that comes over the hood was wrinkled. 
Cal was not able to get any air, so they had to get the hood fitted back up, so they thought it would be best to go behind the wall to work to make all this stuff fit back up so they can make this shape. The only way they could do that was bring it behind the wall, cut everything away, and you see them right now, they're welding support bars back to the nose to make that area stiff enough so that at 190 miles an hour, Tony Stewart's got an opportunity to run in the draft. Yeah, and Jeff, he only they only have one shot to get him back out there. One, it has to be safe, but he's going to find it hard to find anybody to run with, and he has to maintain a minimum speed of 55.89 seconds. They've been racing in the mid-48. But based on what we've seen, Larry, getting this car fixed and getting it back out there could pay big dividends at the end of the night because they're wrecking left and right. He, at least his is repairable. Yeah, Absolutely. and Darrell, one thing I want to add, it doesn't seem that he's got any kind of suspension damage right now. We're coming to green. We'll get speeds at the line to see if Kevin Harvick is again bringing them down for one of those Texas restarts. I saw already a sure. little quicker. I'm pretty sure he got a call. Green flag, green flag. Started about 66 miles an hour. Went up through the gearbox now. Probably came down there in second gear. Grabs third, then grabs high gear. 115 miles an hour to start finish line. That lead draft is 40 cars long. That's how many cars are on the lead lap is Ken Schrader. Restarted on the inside because he is one lap down. He started alongside the leader and is trying to get his number 36 back on the lead lap. He has to help a fast race car. Jeff Gordon in the 24 car, Dale Jarrett in 88, that inside line lined up behind him. I mean, look how close these guys are running. And this is getting up to almost 185, 190 miles an hour. That's why we wreck. When you race that close together, clear, just one clear. little slip. You're into the guy, and you're 180 miles an hour, and you wreck. Kevin Harvick has led all 13 laps so far. But Dale Jarrett has pushed Jeff Gordon into the lead. 24 races without a win. I believe Jeff Gordon's going to be up on the wheel tonight, guys, because he can win this race. He's got a good race car. This would be a good race for him to win. The man on the move, though, is Rusty Wallace. That number two Ford started 37th and climbed up to 11th place in just two laps. He's up to ninth now. And he was fast in practice before qualifying. And they were pretty much scratching their hand. I talked to his coach, Billy Wilbur, and they just could not figure out why they lost so much time when they went to qualify. You can come from the with restrictor plates. Starting in the back is not a problem. You've got a fast car, you can drive right to the front because you're drafting off every car you come to. Interesting that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has now won all the restrictor plate still races. There, still there. Except the Daytona 500. Clear, That's clear. the one where you have to give up your car for a year to Daytona USA. He's won all the others. He gets to keep running the same car. <laughs> it might not be all okay. bad. It's a great problem to have. Yeah. Yes. Like I said, it's good news, bad news. <laughs> good news you won the race, bad news they're going to take your car away from you. His teammates, Michael Waldrop in the 15 and Steve Park in the 1 in Kenny, that lead pack. Kenny Schrader in the 36 car, he got caught in the middle. He's up there trying to get that lap back. He's going to fall back to about 7th or 8th position on the racetrack. The 09, a car we don't see often, but when we see it, it's up near the front. Jeff Bodine, the 1985 Daytona 500 winner, finished 3rd in this year's 500 in this James Finch-owned number 09 Ford. Pulling up alongside the Bodine's white Ford is that silver Dodge of Sterling Marlin, our point leader. Just hope Sterling can keep all of his fenders straight tonight. Him and Rusty Wallace in the two car, they're starting to run, work that high group. There see Mike Wallace in the 33 pulling up behind him as well. Now they have Harvick in the 29 caught in the middle. What he's listing right for right now is the spotter say clear behind somebody. He's not doing that on purpose. He's not, he's not going backward on purpose. He, he just about got in trouble right there off of going into turn three. He and uh, I believe it's Todd Bodan or a smoke. Oh, there it goes. Trouble. Car. Hard in the wall goes Mike Wallace. Scoots across into the grass and half the field goes to pit road to take evasive action as the caution flag flies for the third time in just 17 laps. We do have a pit road speed, but when something like this happens, it, it don't matter. They're doing what they need to do to try to stay out of trouble. You almost could see that starting to happen way back in, in turn four. I, I, 
this is like deja vu all over again as far as I'm concerned. The wrecks here are. The hits just keep on coming, guys. Watch the white 33 of Mike Wallace. White with a blue roof in the again, outside lane. The 31 car is really probably what caused this problem. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and 8 just slides up in front of him. People are having to slow down and take evasive action because there's a car up there high trying to trying to get back in line. Somebody checks up just a little bit and you get tapped from behind. And as the field accordion, did it look like Steve Park got into the back of Mike Wallace and turned him around? See Park there. Boy, everybody in that crowd right there. Oh, man, that car almost tipped over. There all three wrecks have been where somebody has clipped somebody with fender to quarter pound. Just not quite enough room to get in line. Let's watch it with Fox tracks to show Mike Wallace's speed. 184 miles an hour, slowing down just a little bit right here as he pulls up on the back of Sterling Marlin. There you see he clips the wall running almost 150 miles an hour. And boy, I tell you what, that's a great job on everybody's part to just to not get any more cars involved. There's a lot of cars coming at him. Mike Wallace in a part-time ride for Andy Petrie Racing that they hope to turn into a multi-race deal. Colliding with Steve Park, whose option was not picked up by Dale Earnhardt Incorporated on the June 15th deadline. So Park is hoping to stay with this team or get picked up by another for next season. Well, there's a lot of talk about Sam Hornis Jr. coming in from the IRL series. And uh, I tell you, that's a lot of talent right there from what I've seen in the IRL. We saw him at Richmond the other Saturday night. Oh, Saturday man. night, he just blistered him in the last couple of laps. Three caution flags in just 18 laps to start the Pepsi 400. The fireworks have come early here at Daytona. I still think some of the problems on these geese guys clipping each other, and we've seen that a lot this year, is the big headrest that we run now. The pits are still closed. That's what that flag means. These big headrests, the Hans device, the Hudson's device, I think it's really... Uh, limiting the amount of peripheral vision that drivers have. A lot of them have little mirrors there now on the side so they can see down the side of the car. And I see a lot of our leaders coming to pit road right here. A little surprise. I know we're on lap 18, but only half of those laps have been run under green, but pretty much the whole field is hitting pit road, Steve Burns. Jeff Gordon in. There will be no chassis adjustments to this 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Four tires only. No chassis adjustments. Jeff likes the way the car is handling. Let's go to Matt Yoko. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. Pitts. He's only going to take on fuel. The 88 car of Dale Jarrett Pitts. He will take on four tires. No major adjustments. He only pitted because he was going to wait and see what the 24 did. Jarrett, though, is going to lose a lot of track position. This is the 31, Robbie Gordon. Look, he had that damage right there. I mean, that's what happens on pit road on Daytona. We end up with 35 to 40 cars on pit road at one time. And they can't work on it right there because they're not in their pit stall. There's obviously the car that he got into, Todd Bodine, and the 26, they're pitting right behind each other, right, right next to each other. You know, if this was happening at the end of the race, I could understand it. But everybody's racing like this a 10-lapper. A lot of damage to Todd Bodine's port. And there you see the corresponding damage to Robbie Gordon's Chevy. He'll bring that back in, just put it on the card, I guess. Kurt Busch is also in for an extended stop for left front damage to his Ford. So all these cars that spent 100 hours or more in the wind tunnel being so carefully massaged, a lot of them are bent up. Sorry, I got that receipt in here somewhere. Driver's license, bus transfer, dollar off fish sticks. Actually? Floss. <laughs> Just in case. Um, movie stub, mint. Actually, we keep everything right here. Just in case. Right. Just in case. People lose stuff. That's why we can store purchase and warranty information automatically, so you won't have to search anymore. Circuit City, we're with you. Floss. <laughs> Who flosses anyway? I floss. I floss too. Dodge Ram, the only truck with four full-size doors and a full-size bed, plus the handling of rack and pinion steering. Man, I hope no one was behind us. 
So, what'd you guys do last night? Awesome. Oh. So, where have you been? Out. Where'd you go? Wendy's. What'd you get? Junior bacon cheeseburger, fries, and a Coke. Your grandfather and I love that junior bacon cheeseburger. Two strips of bacon, right? Mm -hmm. We get a side salad. Used to be 99 cents. But still 99 cents. Wendy's Super Value Menu, still the best 99 cents you can spend. Does that nice blonde boy still work there? No, Graham, not anymore. Too bad. He was hot. Grandma. Wendy's, it's better here. And remember, you can eat great even late. At Midas, we're known for total car care. Brakes, air conditioning, oil changes. There's almost nothing that we can't do. Impressive. Come in for great deals during Midas' national break event. Midas, ah! we do that. Lauren? Joe. Sorry I'm late, but uh, Rusty Wallace is in the post-race report. There's two things I love. It's Rusty Wallace and Rusty Wallace. Rusty? He is the man. Rookie of the year in 84. Rusty's first NASCAR win in 86. NASCAR champion in 89. Warren, did I ever tell you how Rusty started? Rusty. 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 Hey, Warren, how was your date? Not my type. There's one place where all NASCAR fans can find true happiness, the pit shop at Daytona, USA. But bring your Visa cards because they don't take American Express. Well, back to how Rusty, most people do. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by Visa, the official card of NASCAR. The green flag has just waved to start lap 21. We've had three cautions in the early going. Matt Kenseth into Elliott Sadler, into Tony Stewart. Michael Waltrip and Johnny Benson got together. And then Steve Park tipped Mike Wallace around. Those are the three caution flags. Let's go to Johnny Benson's uh, update. Dick Bergman. Now before Benson left his car, he told the crew find somebody else to finish the race. He had no intention of doing that. The crew is working on the car. His crew chief, James Ince, has just left the care center behind me. How's Johnny doing? That appears that he's okay. They're doing some precautionary check, uh, chest x-rays based on the wreck we had earlier this year at Richmond. And I believe he's all right. He got the wind knocked out of him pretty hard. And they're going to run these tests to make sure everything's perfect. And the only thing I know is he's done for the evening. I go back and see if we can fix the car. And I don't know if we can find a relief driver or not to put back in. But, uh, boy, it's tough racing at Daytona. Yeah, they thought they had a good car. Maybe a shot to win this thing, right? Now, Dick, five drivers stayed on the racetrack and did not pit. So they're up front. Jeff Burton, Bobby Hamilton, Jeremy Mayfield, Terry Labonte, and John Andretti. The first driver who stopped in that line at the restart was Dale Earnhardt Jr., who took on fuel only. And, and that's not a bad call. I just had talked about before they come to pit road, they only had about eight or nine laps on their tires, so those tires really were still in good shape. But wanting to get that fuel in there where they know they may, can make a 50 or 55 lap run, don't look like we, we're going to have to do that based on the first 18 laps. No, but I tell you what, we're, gonna, we're getting so many cars knocked out here, they're going to get spread out all over the place. Uh, I think that uh, things will settle down here very shortly. Kurt Busch obeys a black flag, a signal to come to pit road for attention or penalty. I'll tell you who's coming hard is Ricky right Rudd. Here, about five away. As Bush makes the penalty stop. And the reason he was black flagged is because he runs a stop and go paddle at the end of pit road under caution. There's a man down there the paddle says red stop, green go, and he had flipped it to red because the field was coming and he didn't beat the paddle man. I think that'll cost him a lap. Yeah, he's lost time. Hard. He's going to hold him there for a couple of leaders go by, it looks like. Ricky Rudd, the Sonoma winner on the outside, coming up against Jeff Burton for the lead. Now, it's not that Jeff Burton and Bobby Hamilton in the 55 car, it's not that those guys have not pitted during this race. They actually were all in under that second caution around lap 10 or 11. And right now, the, I know that the crew chiefs, the spotters, and everybody are talking to the drivers saying, hey, guys, let's settle down. We've got a long way to go here. But so many things happen here at Daytona that are out of your control. They truly are. The cars move. They, they go places you just don't expect them to. We had a race here where Tony Stewart was in the front of the pack, got in a wreck, and landed on his teammate, Bobby Labonte, who had been running at the very end of the pack. No place is safe. Yeah, one was running third. The other was running 29th. Right. And they land on top of each other. Go figure. <laughs> and their caution is out. Pace car will pick up the field. 
And this is the caution that was talked about in the driver's meeting at lap 25. Because the teams had no post-qualifying practice, NASCAR was going to give them a caution at or about lap 25 so they could come in and check on things. Check on tire wear. Yeah, I check, make sure everything is I'm tight surprised. No. I mean, we've had three cautions. We've had plenty of chances to come in, work on the cars, put tires on them, everything else. Uh, I guess that the, you know, just doing what they said they'd do. Yeah, I mean, normally what they would do, though, Darrell, when you when they talk about 20 to 25, you have three cautions in the first 18 laps, is maybe when you have a 20-lap green flag run without a caution. And I don't anticipate very many cars coming to pit road because they were just on pit road, a lot of them four, four times. Yeah, uh, maybe those guys that didn't pit this last time, they might want to take a chance, but I believe what I've seen so far, I'm going to stay out front. I don't care if I do run out of gas. The safest place is leading right. this race. And sometimes it's not safe. Come on in. I can't hear you. <laughs> Mike Wallace has taken his car to the garage. Damage incurred in the third caution. Johnny Benson two cracked ribs after that collision with the turn three wall and perhaps as James Inch pointed out residual effect of his hard crash into the wall uh, driving Ted Marsh's Bush car at Richmond. Yeah, he was he was walking very gingerly as he got out of that car and into the ambulance. Pit roads open and no takers at the front of the field. How about we take a pit stop and we'll be right back with the Pepsi 400 on Fox. Looking for NASCAR news, stats, entertainment? Just log on to America Online and go to NASCAR.com. Where else? The all-new NASCAR.com. America Online keyword NASCAR. If you Good evening, I'm Dana Roselli at 10 o'clock. It was supposed to be a sunny day, but Rochester looked like Los Angeles this morning. We'll tell you why. And New York State abolished slavery 175 years ago. The 10 o'clock news. Watch tonight. Are you ready for this area's exclusive cutting-edge raceway and hobby center? It's here. Pit Stop Raceway and Hobby Center's grand opening. It's extreme slot car racing. Pit Stop is the area's largest slot car facility with a huge selection of radio-controlled cars, trucks, planes, boats, watercraft, collectible miniatures, model rockets, and hobby accessories. Come and see them for their grand opening. Remember the name. Pit Stop Raceway and Hobby Center, your exclusive cutting-edge racing. Today, over half a million children get health care through Child Health Plus, New York's health plan for kids. And now, New York State's created Family Health Plus, comprehensive health coverage for adults with great benefits just like Child Health Plus. Now my husband and I can get the same great health coverage as our daughter and our doctors right in the neighborhood. Child Health Plus and now Family Health Plus, building healthy families and healthy communities. Need to get up early? Then watch the 10 o'clock news on Fox Rochester. Got it. Got it. Need it. Think these guys will settle for second place? See for yourself. It's the Mountain Dew Sunny 500 at Darlington Raceway, August 30th through September 1st. Call 843-395-8499 to reserve your seat. And don't forget to ask about the Mountain Dew Fan Zone. The one. The only. Mountain Dew Southern 500 at Darlington. Got it. Sure you can handle a test drive? He knows everything in the world. Accelerate into turns, draw the inside line correct exit throttle oversteer. Everything except who he is. I need to report a missing person. I filled out a form. I'm the missing person. Who is John Doe, Brady's Fox Ball? Only one new show has its finger on the pulse of America. The, the Pulse. A new news magazine with Fox Attitude. Bill O'Reilly's hard-hitting commentary. Geraldo Rivera's investigative reports. Well, why don't you want to talk to me about Hosted it? by Shepard Smith. The Pulse. The Pulse. The Pulse. The Pulse. A new news magazine premieres Thursday at 9, 8 central here on Fox. It is the crucible. It exists to test the best against the best. Against history. In three days, the game's greatest players compete in the summer's biggest event. The 2002 All-Star Game on Fox. Welcome back live to Daytona and the Pepsi 400. And this track pack is brought to you by 
Taco Bell, the construction here back in 1957. First Daytona 500 won by Lee Petty in 1959. The first night race at Daytona won by Jeff Gordon. And, of course, the all-time Daytona race winner, Dale Earnhardt, with 34 wins. Taco Bell wants to remind you to think outside the bun. We had three caution flags, uh, Jeff Hammond inside of 17 laps here. Now we're in our fourth caution. And do you think this has a lot to do with the limited practice time? Yes, I do, Chris. I think that a lot of these teams right now, a lot of these cars that are getting in these problems are just off that little bit. And because they think they need to get in the front in a hurry, a little bit too much impatience and not knowing what the cars are going to do are creating some of these problems. Jeff Burton, currently the leader. He won the Pepsi 400 in 2000. Tony Stewart, one of the pre-race favorites, went out in a hurry. And down below here where we are in right. victory lane as they continue to work on the car, he has remained in the car while they've worked. And he is steaming mad over that earlier accident that he thought Elliot Sadler possibly uh, made a poor decision on. Well, I'm not going to say he knows it's Elliot Sadler was the cause of it. By now, I'm sure he has. But the thing I think about right now, Tony is raced so hard to get himself back in contention his points and get taken out so early you can see the frustration on his face the whole crew but they work very diligently to get this car put back together right if we talked about it earlier when they go back on the speedway if they can't maintain minimum speed and keep up with the pack they'll have to bring it in they're not going to be done so they're trying to make sure it's right Greg Zippendale and the guys are just about finish up repairs they're trying to make sure everything's taped up sealed up and ready to go and Tony did a great job after a disappointing last in the 500 to work his way back up through the points and is very frustrated here. The pole sitter, Kevin Harvick, uh, having some problems. Let's check in with Steve Burns on that. Steve? Well, Chris, earlier we talked about how Jeff Gordon's car had been at the wind tunnel to find an aerodynamic advantage. Well, Kevin Harvick sat on the pole, and Gil Martin, you guys were just lucky to get this car done in time to get down here. Yeah, I tell you, this Goodyear and Chevrolet has had a lot of different sheet metal on it this year. It started the year off as a singular car with Robbie Gordon here in February. We qualified sixth with it. And Talladega sat on the outside pole with it. And it's never seen a wind tunnel, but uh, I tell you what, we got a lot of faith in our fab shop at home. Uh, Adam Meyer, Bobby Hutchins, those guys, they know exactly what they're doing. They've done it a long time. All right, thanks, Gil. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. A few moments ago, at an incident on pit road, a collision. Todd Bodine's rear tire changer, Bill Kerwood, was hit. He has been taken to the infield care center. A spokesperson for the team said he's okay. He just got pinched. Crew chief Donnie Wingo is now changing front sides. Thanks, Dick. We're set to go back to green. Jeff Burton, Bobby Hamilton, Ricky Rudd, who did not pit on that last caution, lead Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Sterling Marlin, along with Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, and John Andretti. Now, we're hearing on the in-car two-way radio communication that Jeff Gordon, instead of taking the green flag, may come to pit road. He talking about maybe possibly having a flat tire. Pace car is in. So is Jeff Gordon. He's on pit road. Green really flag. Cost him. Come on down, one, two, three. And Jeff Gordon thinks he has a flat left rear tire. Bill Elliott gave a visual from his car and confirmed it. Gordon is in. They will change left side tires on the 24 of Jeff Gordon. A flat left rear tire. Daryl, you can do that without losing a lap, but you're a lonely man out there. Yeah, he'll he'll go a lap down if he doesn't uh, get a caution because you can't run by yourself. There's about a second difference in the lap time. Gordon, the defending series champion, winless this year. Right now, he's just getting up to speed in turn one. The pack is over in turn three. They will, as you say, Daryl, they will catch him in a hurry, especially lined up like they are. Yeah, you're, like you said, Mike, you're a lonely man. You're back out there, and that thing was turning 7,000, 7,100 when you were in the draft. Now you're turning about 6,500 and thinking there's something wrong with it. Gordon is half a lap down as Jeff Burton comes to the strike. Under that caution, the only, a lot of guys at the back of the pack, they pitted. The only two cars in the top 20 was Jeremy Mayfield in the 19, Joe Nemechek in the 25 pitted. If you're a singular wireless customer, you can be a virtual crew chief. From your phone, send the word FOX as a text message to number 151. <laughs> 30 of 160 laps complete. Terry Labonte outside the 09 of... Jeffrey Bodine. Behind Labonte, Kevin Harvick, rookie Ryan Newman, and rookie Jimmy Johnson. And there's that sucker hole, and Harvick's trying to go right up in it. You know, he gets a little suck off that five car, and right up into the middle of those two cars he goes, and that's not a good place to be. 
We've got our interval Fox tracks here on Jimmy Johnson, the 48 car. You see right now he's about two and a quarter seconds behind leader Jeff Burton. If that group can get lined up and quit racing two and three wide, then they can catch that group and you, you'd be able to see how quick they could catch it. Darrell, you're right. You don't often see people move forward up through the middle. Oh, you, you'll, you'll think it's the way to go. You'll say, man, I got to run here. I got to run. All of a sudden it's like, oh, what happened? And not only that, you got cars on both sides of you banging into you. There's the lead pack, single file, and there's Mike Skinner in the number four, the man stuck in the middle. Whoa! You see what happened? Whoa! Contact first with that, Blaney that, and almost with Johnson. That's all arrow. That car shoved up by itself. He had no control of that car whatsoever. And that's what we also talked about, Darrell. You can do the three wide or two wide. There you see Tony Stewart, a 20 car. He's going to be back out on the racetrack. He's going to be 30 laps down with hopes that his attrition takes a roll, he'll be able to move up to some positions. But that racetrack just narrows down, especially how tight the exit is on turn four. Now, you hear these drivers week in a while. Y'all folks, y'all heard them talk about, well, I got back in dirty air. Where do you think these cats are in right now? It's pretty dirty air. This is <laughs> filthy air here. <laughs> Steve Burns with an update on Jeff Gordon's problem. And Mike, this is the left rear tire that came off of Jeff Gordon's tire. They sprayed a circle here. You can see bubbles. It's a cut or a puncture on that left rear tire of Jeff Gordon. Fortunate that Gordon caught it under caution and not once he got up to speed. But what the problem is right now, he's out there running like 49 flat. 49 20s and the leaders is up there running 48 30 so he's losing three quarters of a second to a second left you see the fox tracks right here his miles per hour 181 miles an hour to turn three the leaders are running 186 in the turn three. let's get fox tracks on leader jeff burton Twenty kids in the nursery to play nice. Yeah, it just ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Jeff Burton has won this race. He leads it. Dale Earnhardt Jr., also a former winner, the defending champion of this race. Let's go to his pit, Matt Yoakum. Mike, the three DEI cars qualified seventh, eighth, and ninth. They chose pit stalls three, 16, and 25. So in the old days, to converse without the other teams listening on the radio, they'd have to send someone running from pit stall to pit stall to pit stall. But starting with the Daytona 500 this year, they have an internet chat session. Angela Walker, the computer specialist at DEI, set up an instant message session. So all three teams, Dan Stillman here in the eight pit, Slugger Labby in the 15, and Dave Sharpentier here in the one, can talk back and forth strategy. Stillman said they're possibly looking at maybe four tires on that stop. Slugger Labby said possibly two, and that way they can talk back and forth. The only problem, just like your cellular service, sometimes with so much usage in the area, they get knocked offline. Now I've seen everything. Uh, yeah, that's pretty unique. <laughs> my, man, my man Van Collie would be right at home with that. He'd be emailing everybody in the pit. <laughs> Well, it's like everybody started racing again. Now we have one pack of cars, and it's oh, yeah. about 38 to 40 strong. Look you're, at them. You're, you're not right there. You're not going to go anywhere. Everybody but Jeff Gordon. You're not going to go anywhere. The way these cars are, the balance of them, and the restrictor plate, you're not the, going anywhere. The importance of track position. Jeff Burton started 35th. There's Jeff Gordon, lonely guy. No date, Saturday night. Just out for drive by himself. It won't be by itself long. Look who's coming. <laughs> Here comes the rest of the field. 37 laps complete in Daytona. 
just walking through the doors of Daytona would have been enough. Oh, Can you guys believe the embankment? It kept building on itself. Think of the drivers who've driven across this line. They keep topping what you did before. You guys want to take us on first spin? Speed 125. Oh, man, Barry. I like your Grand Prix. <laughs> I like our Winston Cup pace car Grand Prix. Right. But I really like my Grand Prix. Yeah. <laughs> Pontiac Grand Prix, the official pace car of NASCAR for 31 years. It's a credit card. Okay. It's not you have to open it up. Introducing Discover to Go. That's a crazy looking credit card. Wow, look at that. A great new way to carry your Discover card. Wipe it through there and there we've got it. Here's a place for my keys. <laughs> I love it. It's new. I figured that one out, Frank. Very futuristic. Same account numbers, same cash back bonus program, but not like any credit card you've seen before. The Insider Pizza from Pizza Hut is back and better than ever. Now with free extra toppings. When you buy the Insider for $10.99, you can get extra toppings or make it a meat lover's or supreme absolutely free. The Insider Pizza, $10.99 and free extra toppings for a limited time only at Pizza Hut. In most cases, rent center delivers whatever you want the same day. Furniture, TVs. Dog on remote. Now get select items and add another item for next to nothing. Call 1-800-205-2005 for rent center Hey, I like this stuff. Behind the scenes, it's the splitter. No, it's the high heat. Hmm. Did I lock my keys in the car? Mm -hmm. Is that so, sir? Going for my Pepsi. Sammy, Sammy. The one liter big slam from Pepsi. More of the taste you go for. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by the joy of Pepsi, the choice of Victory Lane, by Pontiac. Can you handle a Pontiac Grand Prix? By the Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse, and by Midas Total Car Care. Midas, we do that. 40 laps complete, one quarter distance. 40 laps, 100 miles in the Pepsi 400 at Daytona. First time in prime time on Fox. And Jeff Burton, who started 35th by not pitting on the last caution, has come to the front. Now, Jeff Gordon's out there riding around 180 miles. Now, he ain't got a whole lot to do, so what do you think he's doing? Looking for debris. He'd love to find Pierre, out the Pierre has got to be out here somewhere. But I tell you what, he has a car in front of him right now, Robbie Gordon. If you can see a car, it's helping you. It's helping. He's breaking air. Robbie Gordon's out there. So this definitely will help Jeff Gordon for a few laps. Yeah, He's not long enough. Robbie in a hurry. Robbie's wounded. Yeah, he's, he's got running him. three and a half seconds slower than Jeff. Yeah. But he was some help. Got yes, absolutely. Meanwhile, if Jeff just looks in his rearview mirrors, they're coming. Now, Gordon is still on the lead lap, but he's toward the tail end of it because Jeff Burton is bringing that fast train off turn four. Oh, and they are bunched up off of turn four. Oh, this is ugly. U-G-L-Y. Better come up with an alibi. And again, it's Mike Skinner in the middle. George Burton drops to the bottom, our Daytona 500 winner. And here's our points leader, Sterling Marlin, going for the lead to pick up those five bonus points for leading the race. That could be, you know, could have made a deal with the 99, let me lead, I'll let you back in front. But the way he went by, I'm not so sure that was the deal. But DW, look at the two car up there, Rusty Wallace on the outside. Remember, he started back in 37th position, provisional land, and there he is in second. And his teammate, Ryan Newman, in the 12th car, he was in provisional land at 39. He's up to eight. So, I mean, those two team cars didn't qualify good, but they're racing good. That's what Rusty told us the other day. Yeah, they are. And I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure they're looking back saying, I'm glad I'm not hung up in that mess. And from sixth on back, they've settled down to double file for the moment. 
Billy Kerwood, the tire changer on Todd Bodine's car, is being transported to Halifax Medical Center to have a look at his leg. Uh, Todd and Robbie Gordon collided on pit road while Gordon was leaving his pit after gas only stop as Todd was pulling into his. Got pretty wild down there for a little bit. Four caution flags in the first 25 laps, one of them NASCAR mandated. Now 31 cars. He's going to be right up in the way, and uh, I know he'd like to probably stay up there and hook onto this lead draft, but I don't know if he can or not. Because he's been running about four to seconds slower because he's wounded. The front end of that car is all four up. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has lost a spot to Dale Jarrett. As you watch from Sterling Marlin back to Rusty Wallace. First and second. Dale Jarrett. And you're riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Matt? Mike Dale Jr. just climbed from sixth to fifth. He says with cars on the inside, his Budweiser 8 Chevy is free on entry and it's loose up off the corner, but it's very decent up top. He says the car is especially loose off turn two. Hard to see it at these speeds, but Earnhardt Jr.'s car has horse hide, baseball style stitches running all down both flanks. A big bat along the side to help celebrate the Major League Baseball All-Star Game that you will see on Fox. Tuesday night at the at the end of this long Memorial Day weekend if you are for the July weekend if you will Tuesday night on Fox now if you watch Dale Jr. He's going to try to keep that car right on the bottom but what's happening is the car is actually a little too tight more than likely and it pushes itself loose as it comes off up off the corner and, and what, well, here. what also can be happening and it's a challenge for the crew chief Daryl if that thing has any arrow loose to it you can't really fix it with chassis you'll make it where it gets into the push loose because you tighten the chassis but the body is arrow loose and you'd like to put more spoiler on it that would fix it but it also would slow it way way down on those straightaways you can go up with the rear blade, 55 is the minimum. You can run 70 if you want to. And I have here in the 4th of July seen a car run a lot better when you added a little spoiler to it. It wouldn't be any faster, but it would handle better. Two drivers on the move. Dave Blaney in the Jasper number 77 up to 10, 11th after starting 30th. And our Daytona 500 champion in the 22, Ward Burton. Since starting 41st, he's climbed just outside the top 10. But, Mike, you mentioned it earlier. You talked to his car with Bill Davis. They had a reason why they qualified bad. You had that cal induction opening that forces fresh air to the carburetor, and it had collapsed. There's no wonder that they didn't qualify very good on yesterday. And sometimes, Mike, you'll come down here, and you'll give up a lot qualifying to have a good handling, good driving race car in the race. And that's, that's a critical the 4th of July here, as hot as it is. Jeff Gordon out in front of the lead pack in danger of going a lap down. DW, you guys keep talking about the cars and the way they handle I talked to Tony Glover earlier today and our leader, Sterling Marlin. I asked him, I said, hey, you guys had a lot of success here at Daytona. What's the key in your mind? He says, getting off the of turn two, Jeff. He said, if my driver can run off the of turn two, wide open he can set himself up to make passes and to keep people from making passes on him we've already heard matt yokin say that dale Earnhardt jr is loose off that corner so it's going to hurt him as far as moving up and being able to kind of move up through the field he may be able to hang on we can already see running that bottom groove and you can see tony club right there he's sitting over watching sterling marlin he knows he's got that car working off the turn two and the, and the way they do that jeff i remember down here a couple of times when they were with the four car they pull the front fenders out they get those front fenders pulled out there, particularly that left one. And you'd say, hey, that's going to slow me down. And that car will maybe not be as fast on the restarts, but it comes on as it gets into runs. And what's good about that race car right there, they wasn't involved in the big one the last two or three restrictor plate races. And the more you can run a car, the more you learn about it, and the more you know what its characteristics are. So they know about that race car, what it needs and what it's looking for. One other, one, one other thing I think we go here is that he also said, They've changed their setup. Ever since 1990, they used to run the same setup, but now with the way the new configurations are, the new rules, Tony said they have to constantly look for better ways to make a race car run up front. Jeff Gordon is leading one second per lap to the lead pack. They're about to catch him and put him one lap down in the Pepsi 400 at Daytona. Pushing myself to the limit is what this is all about. And I need an antiperspirant that can keep up. 
all the clear gels that I've tried, they just don't work for me. But now there's new High Endurance Clear Gel. It protects against wetness better than the leading gel. Guaranteed. Try it. If you don't like it, Old Spice will buy you a stick of something else. A clear gel that strong? I'm there. New Old Spice High Endurance Clear Gel. A lot can be said about the fact we only use 100% pure beef in our burgers. Usually, a mouthful. Cool, creamy, smooth, dreamy. Your dessert is waiting just around the corner at McDonald's. Nature made it. Minwax makes it beautiful with rich wood stains and long-lasting protective finishes. Turning a house into a beautiful home is as easy as turning to Minwax. No matter how big your thirst, 7-Eleven has a fountain drink to fit like an ice-cold Dr. Pepper. Ah. Oh, right. The number 99 Aaron's Dream Machine. Oh, yeah. Ain't she a beauty? Of course, she don't compare to the wife, though. <laughs> really, these are the true Aaron's Dream Machines, the products we all dream about owning. And at Aaron's, everyone's automatically pre-approved with no credit required? Yeah, and you get the guaranteed lowest price, too. So you can afford this awesome RCA 52-inch big screen TV with picture-in-picture, -picture, big speaker sound, and free screen protector. And I'm really pre-approved? That's right. So let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. They were fighting for their lives. The war's at the front. We're not even in it anymore. Speak for yourself. He fought for a cause. A man has to be sacrificed. That's the way it has to be. He will be the first. Bruce Willis, Colin Farrell, Hearts War, Rent or Own a Tuesday. Kenny Bernstein, six-time NHRA world champion with over 500 career victories. When you want it all, where do you go from there? Go Kenny, go Kenny. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. Delivering beer at its best with the crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. Jeff Gordon, a two-time winner of this race, has been lapped. He made a pit stop just at the end of a caution period for a flat left rear tire. Stayed out in front of the pack for some time, but now he's been lapped, and he and Sterling Marlin got together a lap or so ago. Here's a look at it. I'm thinking Jeff probably tried to block Sterling so he could get up there and run and try to stay in front of him. But you know what, Larry, you, you may or may not know this. I think you do. Dell Earnhardt ran a bigger bar in his bumper than most other guys did. Just so when he bumped somebody like that, he didn't get his front end off caved in. Absolutely, because you caved that front end, it, the day's over. You saw those little flimsy bars that Jeff was showing you that most guys run up there to hold the nose in place, but a smart guy, he'll run a little bit heavier bar there just in case he wants to bump draft. Sterling Marlin becomes the fourth different leader of this race after Kevin Harvick. Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton. I tell you, a guy one of those Robert Yates cars that qualified good, the 88 car, Dale Jarrett qualified fifth, and he's moved up to fourth position. I believe Matt Yoakum has a little information on DJ's car. Well, Larry Mack, the four-time Daytona winner on a drive for five, has been quiet on the radio. The only thing that he has said is his temperatures have been climbing. The water climbed to 220. So since the car is running a little hot, he's had to poke out that nose to try to get a little air into that radiator, to cool down that water every now and then, to try to bring those temperatures down. And a lot of people, Larry, like we talked earlier today, had to guess a little bit about how much tape to use on the front of that race car since we didn't have a final practice session. I mean, absolutely, that's a product of no practice. And you, you can't totally go back to your February notes because the weather was much cooler. You can't go back to last July's notes because with that strip across the roof, it changed the airflow through the grill. So there was a lot of crap shooting and guessing. You want to run as much tape as you can because that reduces the drag. So there's a lot of guessing going on on front end tape. Yeah, and, and the grill on the Ford, the nose right there where the grill is is real laid back. So it doesn't see quite as much air as some of the other cars does. Larry, keep 
talking about uh, how we need to cool these race cars. One guy that kind of dodged the bullet this week or the, earlier today was Michael Walker, the guy running second place right now. They actually cranked the car up, and just as they shut the engine off, they noticed that the radiator was spitting water out. The electric fan on the back side of the radiator had actually worn a hole into a brand new radiator. They had to change the radiator before they put the car on the line, and at least as far as right now is concerned, it looked like they took care of the problem. He dodged a big bullet. If they'd gotten out of that garage area without catching it, he wouldn't be where he is right now. Yeah, and I think one of the things about Michael's car, Jeff, is the longer they run, uh, the shock package, I know kind of what he runs in that car, and it'll take care of the tires better than some of these other guys' stuff will. The longer he runs, the better he gets. I'll tell you, Dale Earnhardt Jr., that Budweiser car, Dale Jarrett, the UPS car, they've been side by side. Rusty in the two car behind them, Rusty Wallace, he's trying to figure out which one of these guys is going to prevail. He'll move up behind Dale Earnhardt Jr., he'll move behind Dale Jarrett in 88. You hear him lifting in and out of the throttle, too, just a little bit there. You saw as he went up the racetrack how that squirreled up the eight car in front of him. These cars are, are hooked together. You just can't see it. They're hooked together by funnels of air, by tunnels of air. And when you go in and out of that tunnel, you move that car around. 14 cars are in that lead pack. And as you watch from Michael Waltrip. Sterling Marlin, Waltrip in second. Dale Jarrett, Dale Earnhardt Jr. side by side for third and Rusty Wallace. Looking on. And these cars will just go back and forth. One on the outside will move up about a half a car at the head, one on the inside, they'll just go back and forth, back and forth. Can't quite make the pass. You know what, guys? We've had our longest green flag run here, about 27 or 28 laps, and we have a typical Daytona now. We have about three or four packs out there. What's different from here from Talladega? Handling is more of a characteristic here. It's more of the package. Your car has to drive good. Turn four, car hard in the wall, Kenny Wallace. Caution is out. Where's Jeff Gordon? Trying to get back on the lead lap, no doubt. Caution out, leaders in turn two. Now the leaders will not race one another, so here comes Gordon trying to bust his way through traffic. Get by them as he can. Track's all clear. That's Ronnie Field, Gordon's spotter. I just don't believe Sterling Marlin will let Jeff Gordon have this lap back. Everybody else will, but they tell you in the driver's meeting, let the leader keep the cars a lap down. He's got a pretty good run, Darrell. I don't he does, know. But I don't think he can make it. Sterling Marlin knows he gives that 24 car a lap back. It'll haunt him later. Yeah, Gordon you know, not you know what you know what else back. will have haunt him? This is great. We're gonna get four tires on it. Watch your temperature. Kenny Water, two. Kenny Wallace. He's got some left front damage there on the 24 car. See the sidewall and the left front tire all rubbed off? He got up against somebody. Pretty good, looks like. I believe he got against Dave Blaney in the 77 on the back stretch. Kenny Wallace cut down a right front tire, apparently. That's what propelled him into the outside wall at turn four to bring out our fifth caution of the night. Darrell, what Sterling Marlin did just that then, pinning Jeff Gordon a lap down, is something we were talking about in Michigan, about who you need to race and who you don't amongst those lap cars. Yes, sir. tail end of the lead lap cars. Sometimes it's okay to slow down and let a guy back because you know he can't beat you. But when you got somebody like Jeff Gordon who was leading the race up, they had trouble. You don't let him have a lap back if you can help him. I would have to say we just had talked about almost 30 laps on this run. We will see most of our leaders to pit road for four tires. Because from here, you could do it on one more stop as well. And I'm sure there's lots and lots of guys that are thinking that very thing. Give me four tires, top me up real good here. Let me see if I can make it on one more stop. This time by, we'll complete 60 laps, 100 to go. Because we've had so many cautions here early on. Now the field's bunched up again. We're going to have some pretty tight racing. But as they were spreading out there, uh, you know, the racing is not so hectic. And uh, you can start thinking about making it on one more stop. Let me tell you what else is going to be hectic. We're going to have 35 cars all on pit road at one time. All the leaders. Dick Burke. Rusty Wallace is going to take four tires in his car. He is very pleased with the way this thing is running and has called for no changes on it whatsoever. He has said, however, that in his opinion, the 88 Jarrett may have an engine problem. Wallace still in the pits right now. First of the leaders to Steve. Well, Dick Sterling Marlin wants his car tightened up just a little bit. He'll get four tires, one pound out of the
the right rear and a round of wedge to Matt Yoakum. Tony Uri Jr. is already hitting the lugs in the left front. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is down the way with a four tire change. He's not going to beat the 15 off. Dale Jr. the 88 car with a little bit tight. He took a half a pound of air pressure out of both left side tires. Pit stops completed. Good Michael job, Waltrip Good job. Way to be. leads the charge off pit road. And trouble on our Daytona 500 pole sitter, the leading rookie, Jimmy Johnson. Looks like they're working on the right front fender. Got some damage over there. Putting a Band-Aid on it, trying to. There's the two winners off pit road right there. Those DEI cars, Michael Walter in the 15, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in eight. We'll look at the race at the end of pit road. There you see the strike. And that's where they measure who beats who back onto the racetrack. That's where the field is frozen. We're under caution. We'll be right back. life by the horns. Hey. It's real simple. I spend cheese with bees and drop it 90 grand. Ain't nothing for me. Pull your arms up, move from right to left. Got ladies running their hands across my face and What's chest. What's this? I said, Pookie, T-Money, Romeo. Zoom in. Yeah. See that right there? I didn't get in. Yo, they said they was with you. No, 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 no. They, they said they were with you. I remember, I remember the sticky. They said they were with you. Somebody better know something. It's me and our vice bring me in my beverage. Intelligent nightlife. Today on Chef Wars, Kubion takes on Taco Bell crew member Scott. Gentlemen, using only the ingredients before you create a complete meal. Begin! Curious, Scott's using a bowl. How unusual. He's adding seasoned rice, beans, and... Ooh, grilled all-white meat chicken. Marvelous. He's finished! The zesty chicken border bowl. Le package total. Scott wins. Cool. Ah. To get the total package, think outside the bun. When you compete in the world's fastest sport, you and your dreams of success live by one simple rule. Never drive alone. Hey, Kenny, thanks for setting up this workout with the WWE superstars. Yeah, suggesting they help us toughen up for the next race was a great idea. Did I say tough enough? I meant tough enough. Hi, girls. <laughs> I hope you boys took your stacker twos because it's going to be a long day. You know, stacker two really does give you that extra boost of energy. And it helps burn fat and crush cravings. If the boys are getting tired, I've got some Stacker 2 in the car. Stacker 2, it's the world's strongest fat burner. I need the number for a Jeff Gordon. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Spare of Ice, Intelligent Nightlife. By Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. And by your neighborhood 7-Eleven store. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. The fifth caution flag of the night came out of lap 59 when Kenny Wallace cut down a tire and hit the wall hard. Leading rookie Jimmy Johnson has damage to his car, and they're making repair panels down behind the pit wall. Steve Burns. Well, Mike, as the crew works on the right front, a replacement piece for the right front. We'll talk to crew chief Chad Canals. Chad, tell us about the damage. Uh, the 43 car checked up early on in that run, and Jimmy ran. Jimmy ran into him and knocked a big hole in the right front there. You know, we're concerned about losing too much track position, but we got, also got to get the car fixed. We see the crew working on a, a replacement piece. We have to put it back on. Uh, we'll kind of see how, what happens here. Jimmy's trying to talk to me here. Uh, we're going to see what happens here, you know, see how the car handles. We got most of the hole patched up, but, you know, we just see, have to see what happens. I don't know yet. How's that? <laughs> Let's go back upstairs to Mike. Now, it's the caution wave for Kenny Wallace in turn four. Let's ride with Jeff Gordon, who was trying to get a lap back from leader Sterling Marlin and listen to his spotter, Ron Thiel. 
This is what you call a move of desperation by a guy that's won a lot of races. But I got to get by you guys. I got to get that lap back. And I'm sorry if it made you mad. Excuse me, pardon me. Just gotta go. go. I've got to go now. We're set to go back to green at lap 63. Michael Waltrip leading Dale Jarrett, Waltrip's teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Point leader Sterling Marlin. So it's Chevy Ford, Chevy Dodge, then Rusty Wallace, Jeff Burton, Dave Blaney in Fords, Bobby Hamilton, Mike Skinner in Chevy. Well, if you were here last July, this could spell trouble for everybody with that uh, 15 and 8 up front. He's in the Fox tracks. Michael Walter, the, the leading the race right now, brings him down almost 70 miles an hour. He saw Kevin Harvick back in 20 at the home center at about 75 miles an hour. He was lagging back and getting a run. The biggest mover on pit stops, that Robbie Reiser led crew for Matt Kenseth. Kenseth came in 21st, came out 14th. Yeah, but, you know, he's got a lot of body damage on the uh, left side there from that earlier incident. They probably need to stop in the pits there and work on that a while. A two-lap penalty now on Kurt Busch and the number 97 being held in the pits. And a correction on the earlier NASCAR report on injuries. Billy Kerwood, the tire changer, is being x-rayed at the care center in the infield. It was Johnny Benson who, with the two cracked ribs, was transported to Halifax Medical Center. So, fellas, it's our last Winston Cup race of the season on Fox. NBC TNT take over next week. No, we haven't done yet tonight. Crank it up. 20,000 horsepower. Wide open. to cup racing fourth of july fireworks of a different kind yeah i don't know what you call that but i call that music <laughs> <laughs> I love it. big loser on that round of pit stops was ricky rudd who came in 11th and came out 17th and then everybody else two by two we need to document the reason they're holding Kurt Busch on pit road this time in the 97 car is he moved up the pit he passed cars before coming to pit road under caution, you cannot do that. Now here's Rudd trying to regain lost ground, and right behind him in the 25, last night's Bush Series winner, Joe Nemechek. And he started dead last, but I found out why. They changed gears before qualifying, didn't put enough lubricant in the gear. He had a fast race car practice, and he told me, watch me, I'll be good tonight. Well, he need, if he's anything like he was last night, he'll be awesome. Kurt Busch has been released by the NASCAR officials back onto the racetrack. He is six laps down and without benefit of the draft. And that's two penalties tonight. Remember, he ran the stop and go pad that earlier. And I think back to Lowe's Motor Speedway. Had a great race car, but had penalties on pit road. He's just not getting the message yet. But uh, nights like tonight, he'll get it sooner or later. Teammates, Michael Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Who had finished 1-2 here in that order and in the reverse order. This is deja vu right here. 
all over again. Driving for the team started by the late Dale Earnhardt, who picked Steve Park as his first Winston Cup driver. And then Dale Jr. moved up from the Bush Series, and Michael Waltrip came aboard. Dale's widow, Teresa, now owns and runs this team. And has to be pleased to see two of her drivers out front at 68 laps. Well, I'm particularly impressed with the job my brother has done the last several weeks, guys. We've I mean, been in the top ten just about everywhere we've been the last several weeks. Now front tonight. I tell you, Mike Skinner, that fourth car, boy, he he shot the, the hole up through the middle without a lot of help. They were three wide. He said, boys, you're not peeing them in the middle here before we get to turn three. And he shot the gap. Sometimes you look around and see who you're racing with and decide maybe you ought to let off and let them go on. <laughs> cars trying to sprint away from the field behind them about 25 trying to run them down 70 laps complete next time by in the Pepsi 400 on Fox. Check this out. Bob here needs a car. Oh. Uh, how about a pickup? Uh, a black one. With a place for my bike. With two million new and used cars, you're sure to find the one you want at autotrader.com. Need a loan? Oh, yeah. Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. So, Mrs. Petty, we called Kyle at the track and said, let's have dinner for two. Dinner for two? Dinner for crew? They're close. Ma'am, were you on a cell phone? Yes, I was. Patty, I, I warned you about the static. That explains everything. Here, Sprint PCS built the only all-digital, all-PCS nationwide network, so your calls will be clear. Thank you. What about them? I'm thinking drive through 4,000 minutes for $39.99 from Sprint. Summer in Dublin, Ohio, where you can count on two things, mosquitoes and garage sales. You know that's one of a kind. Half the town is buying. This must be one of a kind. And the other half is selling. It's one of a kind. And with the money we save, we go to Wendy's for the super value menu. Everything is just 99 cents. Junior bacon cheeseburgers, made Dave's way, cold drinks, hot fries. It's the best 99 cents you can spend. One of a kind. The super value menu at Wendy's. It's better here. And remember, you can eat great even late. At Renna Center, you're already pre-approved. Yeah, that's pretty good. So just come in, pick out whatever you want, and in most cases, it's delivered the same day. Stuff like furniture, computers, TVs. Doggone remote. And now, when you get select items during dollar days, you can add on another item for next to nothing. Call 1-800-205-2005 for the nearest door. 1-800-205-2005 for Renna Center. Hey, I like this stuff. At Midas, our knowledgeable technicians love cars. It's all we think about. Sad. Come in for great deals during Midas' national break event. Midas, we do that. Fox Wednesday, you voted for the first nine. This week, it's the judges' turn to choose the tenth and final contestant. Who will they pick for a last chance at stardom? I don't think that was good enough. Find out on American Idol at a special time, 9, 8 central, Fox Wednesday. In just three days, the 2002 All-Star Game on Fox. 73 laps complete of 160. Michael Waltrip leading his teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr. in Chevrolets. Sterling Marlin, the point leader in a dog. Rusty Wallace, who's never won a big race at Daytona, in fourth in a Ford, and Dale Jarrett fifth. Let's go on board Sterling Marlin. Hey, listen, uh, we've done better five points now. We've done less than laps, so uh, let's be smart here. And from what I'm seeing right now, we ain't going to have a heck of a lot of friends at the end. Uh, unless some dodges make some big gains. 
So uh, we need to find somebody that's going to work with us and uh, be their buddy. All right. What I, what I like about that, I mean, that's good information for Sterling because it's something to think about at the end of the race. But I liked how calm he was, Mike. I mean, he's sitting there. He's not excited. I mean, the car obviously is doing a great job. And look at this. Tony Santana Cole, the engine builder. You know, Steve, why is he carrying a carburetor? Mike, I, I cannot answer that question, but I can tell you this, that Sterling Marlin also told his spotter, Lauren Rainier, go over to the two spotter and ask him why Rusty won't run behind us. The answer was that Rusty's running a little bit hot, so occasionally he'll dart from side to side just to get some air to the radiator. Yeah, I mean, they build motors for several teams. They obviously have Sterling Marlin, they have Jimmy Spencer. You know, maybe what they're complaining about the, the things missing or something, and they're anticipating maybe changing the carburetor to fix a miss. Maybe it feels like it's it's surging or something. Yeah, and, uh, and that's the standard answer from another car. When you ask them to run behind you, I can't. I'm running hot. Well, the only Dodge that's in a position to help them is Ward Burton, the number 22 in ninth place. He's not near close enough to help Sterling. We've got a long way to go. Oh yeah, yeah, folks, don't get all don't get comfortable now because just because we're spread out a bit here right now, I guarantee you things will pick up here in a little bit. Guys, how about that yellow car on the bottom right there, Dave Blaney in the 77 car? I mean, this is a single car operation. Ryan Pemberton, the crew chief, they you do use Jasper Penske engine, but I mean, he started back in 30th, and his best restrictor plate finish ever is 17th, and he's been running in the top 10 for the last 40 or 50 laps. Well, I think the way we see Rusty's car run around, Newman's been up there, they got the same power, and I think that's the key to their success here this weekend is that power they got in the hood. Now, here's Rusty. We started 37th. He's up to fourth. Blaney, Blaney started 30th. He's up to fifth. Doesn't matter where you start here, does it? Oh, no. Yeah, Starting in the back is not a bad thing. It's kind of like coming up on the interstate and you got five lanes there. You just pick the one that's moving. And you just keep moving up through there until you get to the front. Ryan Newman started 39th. He's seventh. Jimmy, or rather, Ward Burton started 41st. He's up to ninth. I'm pretty impressed with Ward Burton. I mean, he's hanging in here. Not in too bad a shape right now. Mark Martin's right in that mix. And Mark's up to ninth, started back in 18th. Didn't sound real happy about his race car yesterday or the way it was running. And what's happened here? This lead pack has now split. In, it's like an amoeba. It's divided itself in half. Five in front, five trailing. Of course, all these cars are on the lead lap with the exception of Jeff Gordon, 24 car right there, who's fixing to be in the middle of this group. He's going to be sandwiched between teammates, Ryan Newman in the 12 and Rusty in the 2. Ryan made a good move there, though. He fell back in behind him. He didn't push the envelope on the exit of that corner. Yeah, he, you know, he'd probably like to have worked with his teammate, but he couldn't. He's down, pinned down on the inside. But what we're going to see here for a little while now is the cars. Now we're going to see whose car really handles good. We're getting strung out here. We're going to make some long runs. It's who's got the best handling package now. Well, Joe Nemechek told us after last night's win, he could have run off the corners on the bottom and on the bottom against the yellow line all the way down the straightaway, all the way around the racetrack. So if you can get a Bush Series car to do that, chances are somebody in the Winston Cup garage has figured out how to do the same thing if necessary. Let's go back to Steve Burns on Tony Santanicolo. Well, Mike, it may not be a big story. Tony, we got all excited watching you carry that carburetor, but there's no problem. No, I always have a spare carburetor every race. I just forgot to bring it out. <laughs> all right, thanks for clearing that up, Tony. Just happened to have one in my pocket. Yeah, well, you know, we've been watching Sterling, and he certainly doesn't have a carburetor problem. Well, you better believe this. Tony walked behind every kid carrying that carburetor. He got all the team's attention saying, hey, look, they, they might have a carburetor problem. <laughs> and uh, good news from Todd Bodine's crew. Billy Kerwood has been released from the infield care center. He is on crutches, uh, but it appears that nothing is broken. So that's good news. Michael Walter, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Sterling Marlin lead in Daytona.
times like this, I think how lucky I am to be a NASCAR Winston Cup driver and how fortunate I am to have a great sponsor like Napa Auto Parts because Napa understands quality and value and the importance of having a friendly, knowledgeable staff. And it's at times like this, looking around at the empty grandstands and listening to the silence of pit road that I realize I'm at the wrong track. Jim! Hey, Mikey. Here's our TV, 57 inch wide screen. Looks even better than last week. Can we take it home this time? Therein lies the problem, Peter. The minute we take it home, I'm gonna see it on sale. You know, with Circuit City's Price Match Plus, you don't have to worry about that. Huh. Don't worry, take it home. Because if you find a lower price within 30 days of purchase, we'll give you back 110% of the price difference. Circuit City, we're with you. Does this mean my video game system can come home too? <laughs> we have always felt that our trucks were tougher than anybody else's trucks. I've had people say to me, I own a Ford truck, and I have 120,000 miles on it, and it's still as good as the day I bought it. Ford trucks stand up to anything that you can do to them. Built Ford Tough isn't just a slogan. It's what we deliver. The people that buy Ford trucks say to us, I will only buy Ford trucks. I mean, I love hearing that. Pizza! In my family, if one wants pizza, the other wants Chinese. Even their stomachs don't agree. If one gets indigestion, the other one gets heartburn. If one gets nausea, the other one gets... Well, so I get Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, it relieves heartburn, indigestion, upset stomachs, nausea, and diarrhea. It'd take a box full of other medicines to do what Pepto-Bismol does. Agree? Agree. Agree. Pepto-Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by Pepto-Bismol. First aid for stomachs, use as directed. By Ford, no boundaries. By Circuit City, we know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And by Rocky Mountain Cold, Coors Light. Cold down easy. Along with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, welcome back live to Daytona. And I uh, hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend here on Fox. Here's today's halfway recap brought to you by Coors Light. The bullshitter Kevin Harvick led for the first 13 laps. He's not really been a factor since. That first 26 laps had four different cautions here. Jeff Gordon led for a while. Jeff Burton led for 23 consecutive laps. Even Sterling Marlin in there for a while. Now, Michael Waltrip, your leader, followed by Dale Earnhardt Jr. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, and I've talked about it throughout the broadcast, the DEI cars, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, have won four of the last six restrictor plate races coming in. Jeff Hammond, do they put, and we say they, we mean DEI, more of an emphasis on racing here or restrictor plate racing to have such success? I think that's pretty obvious, right? there Chris that they do but I think one thing we're kind of like forgetting is what's the best way probably to miss the big one be in front of it so if you've got cars that can go out front and lead a pack the likelihood of getting caught back up in a big mess back in the back it's is, is less so these guys figure that if they work on their cars keep them up front the less chance of getting caught up in the big one and they're doing a really good job of that tonight and why don't more teams put the same kind of emphasis on? I, I think it's just a fact that they kind of like losing sight of that and i believe maybe matt yokeman has a, uh, some more insight on it well jeff when the late dale earnhardt hired richie gilmore to head up the engine department at dei he told him that the most special part to him was the sticker plate racing he wanted to have a top-notch deal they spent over two million dollars a year just for the sticker plate program they also have three full-time employees from the last race at talladega last year up until the daytona 500 this year they had a plate engine on the dyno or on the chassis dyno every day that's the kind of emphasis they put on their plate program and it shows and uh, Michael Waltrip, his last race more than a year and a half ago, came at the, his only a career win in Winston Cup at the uh, Daytona 500. Let's go back upstairs. Michael Waltrip leading Dale Earnhardt Jr., teammates, a six-car breakaway draft, plus Jeff Gordon in that draft, who's one lap down. A lot of brothers in NASCAR racing. There are the Burtons. Right now, Jeff is ninth, Ward is tenth. There are three Wallace brothers, led by Rusty in eighth. Three Bodine brothers, led by Todd in 22nd, and two Labonte brothers, led by Bobby in 16th in this race. I just believe some of the reasons that uh, the DEI cars, Michael Dale Jr. and those guys run so good here, Dale Earnhardt had this intense desire 
to win here at Daytona. And Larry, you and I talked about this. I believe that he put more emphasis personally when he was driving on this race. And when he started his own team, he put the same kind of emphasis on winning at Daytona. This is the race he wanted to win so desperately, so badly, and he only got the win at one time. When I look at those two cats in front, Michael Waltrip has always run good at Daytona. Yes, Talladega. He has. When I look at the man in second, I think the cliche, the apple don't fall far from the tree. You got it, buddy. Singular Wireless customers can participate in our virtual pit crew feature from your phones by sending the word Fox as a text message to number 151. We are past halfway at 87 laps. You ride with Robbie Gordon there. He is 38, two laps down. And talk about where you start doesn't matter so much. What's happened to our front row? Kevin Harvick, who started on the pole, is back at 30th. And right behind him, the outside pole sitter, Jeffrey Bodine, in 31st. See the Harvick on the Fox tracks there at 184 miles per hour, and right now he is about uh, about nine and a half seconds behind the leader. Steve Burns with more. Mike, our pole sitter Kevin Harvick sustained damage to the right front of that race car, about where the headlight decal would be. There's actually a dent or a hole. The team put a patch on, but it blew off, so they've made another one on the next pit stop. They've made it out of sheet metal and duct tape, and they'll apply that to that right front about where the decal, or the headlamp decal would be. Thanks, Steve. Harvick suffering along in 30th. 35 cars are on the lead left. Now our outside pole sitter, Jeffrey Bodine, Dick Berger. Well, Jeffrey's problem is also in the right front corner, Mike. He had a early tangle with another car. They've worked on it on several occasions while they had pitted, but it's really not quite right. He's also complained he doesn't like the rear shock absorbers in the car. He's had a vibration earlier this evening. It's just been a whole host of problems for Jeffrey Bodine. Come out. Dick, the guy who won the very first Pepsi 400 night race at Daytona, Jeff Gordon, has been doing his best Monty Hall imitation, making deals to work his way to the front. But he may have come to a close because the 15 and 8 cars from DEI are going to try to keep him a lap down. They're not going to try to let him get by and work any kind of deal with the 24 because they know how stout Jeff Gordon is here at Daytona. And I think that's what, the, you know, there's two guys up there. They say, hey, that cat can beat us. And we got the best Chevrolets out here. And we want to keep him behind us if we can. But, I mean, Jeff Gordon, Darrell, I think he's doing the best thing he can do. He's sitting there in third. He don't need to start racing because he's going to drive up there past those guys by himself without any help. The closer he can be to them, he may catch them off guard if a caution should come out. So he's doing what he has to do, and about the only thing he can do. You know, and following up a little bit on what we're talking about, Dale Earnhardt and my brother Michael, I think he saw in Michael how great he has always run here at Daytona. And I think that he felt like if he put Michael in a car like he's out there in tonight, that Michael could win races, not only here at Daytona, but everywhere. Jeff Green battling Kyle Petty in the 45 and Jimmy Spencer in the 41. This is a race for 25th and behind them, the third Earnhardt Incorporated car, Steve Park in the number one and our pole sitter Kevin Hart and Stacy Compton. In winning the 2001 Daytona 500, Michael Waltrip led 27 laps, the most he had ever led at Daytona in one race. Tonight, he's been out in front for 31 laps. Hey, Kenny, thanks for setting up this workout with the WWE superstars. Yeah, suggesting they help us toughen up for the next race was a great idea. Did I say tough enough? I meant tough enough. Actually, Kenny, we meant tough enough, too. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna like this. If he gets tired, he's got plenty of Stacker 2 inside his car. That's great, because Stacker 2 really does give you an extra boost of energy. And it helps burn fat and crush cravings. Stacker 2, it's the world's strongest fat burner. Rusty, help! For years, the signs have been appearing. On August 2nd, the world will discover their meaning. Look at where it's bent over. Can't be by hand. It's too perfect. And what one man believes... Oh! Don't be afraid of what's happening. ...may save his family. They're in the house. Mel Gibson. Here it comes. M. Night.
Night Shyamalan's Signs. There's a monster outside my room. Can I have a glass of water? Rated PG-13. Everywhere August 2nd. Having quadruplets, we have a very busy schedule, so we shop for everything at Walmart. We get our tires here, too. I can leave the car there for an oil change, new tires, and go shopping. When you're picking out a tire, you need a, a name brand that you trust, and Walmart carries those, and I know I can trust their prices. We can get our car serviced, get all their toys, and still be home in time for lunch and naps. We have a little sticker on the back of our car that says quadruplets on board. I don't trust my children with just anybody because it's precious cargo. The Insider Pizza from Pizza Hut is back and better than ever. Now with free extra toppings. When you buy the Insider for $10.99, you can get extra toppings or make it a Meat Lovers or Supreme absolutely free. The Insider Pizza, $10.99 and free extra toppings for a limited time only at Pizza Hut. The all-new Dodge Ram. With an available 245 horsepower Magnum V8. Rack and pinion steering, and the largest brakes in its class. And they have a boat just like ours. Find the seams. It's the splitter. No, it's the high heat. Hmm. Did I lock my keys in the car? Mm -hmm. Is that so, sir? Going for my Pepsi. Sammy, Sammy. The one liter big slam from Pepsi. More of the taste you go for. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by the joy of Pepsi. The choice of Victory Lane. 95 of 160 laps complete. Mike Joy with Daryl Waltrip, Larry McReynolds. As Michael Waltrip continues to lead his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and right behind them sits Jeff Gordon, the defending Winston Cup champion, trying to get a lap back. Now, just as we listen to the drivers and crews communicate, so do the other teams. Listen to Michael Waltrip. Still clear, single foul. Just for information, that 24 car, the fourth car in line, he's pretty good. So if the caution comes back, uh, I don't think we ought to get his lap back. He might fight him. And now Jeff Gordon. I know you know this, but those guys are not going to help you get your lap back. This day, so keep digging on them. Keep digging. That's Danny Culler, uh, Michael Spotter, and. Uh, what they, they needed to see that play, to, that rerun that we, we saw there a little earlier when Gordon split them and tried to go up through the middle to get a lap back. He's going to be pretty desperate to get that lap back if a caution does come out. And I tell you, Denny Culler is a sharp guy. He spotted for years and years for Dale Earnhardt Sr. He's also the man that spotted all of those Winston Cup races and Bush events for Kevin Harvick last year. Good spot. I think that was Robbie Loomis talking to Jeff Gordon. Now on protocol, as Michael Waltrip goes way up high, traffic around race traffic Hunt Strickland there you do not have to rate to you don't have to back out of it and roll out of it and coast to the caution flag so if a flag were to come out as long as Michael's not in any jeopardy with the track blocked in front of him he can haul the mail all the way around to the yellow two things they tell you one in the driver's meeting first of all let the leader keep the other guys a lap down now some of these guys will pull over and let you get a lap back I'm not a big fan of that but it also depends on who it is. And that's why I'm not a big fan of it. If you're going to do it for one guy, you ought to do it for everybody. But in my opinion, you should never pull over and let anybody get a lap back. Hey, guys, I'm pretty impressed, though. I know we had three cautions in the first 18 laps. We're almost 100 laps into this, and we only have two cars that's out. Kenny Wallace in the 98, Johnny Benson in the 10. Mike Wallace is back out there with repairs 59 laps down. And we showed Tony Stewart is back out there 33 laps down. 98 complete, closing in on 100 laps. Let's go to Pit Road and Dick Bergman for tonight's Ford No Boundaries moment. Compare Rusty Wallace starting positions to his finishing positions this year, and he has passed 162 cars. Tonight, he started in the 37th spot. He has run in the top 10 all night long. In the last 10 races here at Daytona, he has scored more top fives, more top tens than everyone, anyone. He has never won a Winston Cup point race here. He is overdue. Maybe tonight, Mike. Maybe. He 
certainly has come from the back. One of several drivers to start back from provisional land and work their way up into the top ten. Wallace presently is seven. And at this point in the season, I mean, we're here on halfway. He's looking at the big picture. Oh, you know, a guy like him, he's a big picture driver. He's won the championship before. Not too concerned he hadn't won a race yet, but that will get to him before long. Last night in the Bush Series race, Joe Nemechek won by staying on the bottom of the racetrack, right where these cars are running through the corner, and nobody could challenge him to the outside. Darrell, how is this type of racing tonight different? There, there is an art to leading a race. Michael could possibly be backing out of the throttle in just ever, it just at the right places. At the right places, so it bottlenecks everybody up, keeps them behind him. Boy, speaking of right places, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and A-Car was in the wrong place. Jeff Gordon in the 24 ran up there, right on his rear bumper, back away, run up again, and got him loose and kicked him out of line. Now, Jeff Gordon is right behind leader Michael Walters. We're about to see how strong Junior's car is. If he can pull back up the outside behind Michael, I think that would show us something. Well, here's what I like. Dale Jerry, one down here a lot. Three Daytona 500. He's just cruising right now. <laughs> he's sitting there in a car that I think he's very, very happy with. He's not going to put up a real big fight right now. But here comes Junior on the outside, came up alongside, and now going to drift back just a little bit on Ryan Newman as they get up to turn three. 77 slipping in there, too. Things are heating up as we cross 100 of 160 laps in the Pepsi 400. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. What would you do with the Pontiac Grand Prix? Later, Georgia! Daytona! To go around that track. Oh, this is incredible. Oh my god, there's Tony Stewart. Oh, awesome! I think he has her lap. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! It's grabbing the corners. Oh. And I am sticking to this seat. You guys want to take this oh, one for a spin? Yeah. I'm going to make them wet their pants. Could you handle a Pontiac Grand Prix? Take him down and back, please. Oh, now that's a beautiful creature, Tom. No doubt about it. This one has got champion written all over him. This could be the year for the standard. Hello. Oh, dear. That's definitely going to cost him. Sign up for Singular Nation and never pay long distance, never pay roaming. Plus, get 3,500 night and weekend minutes. Cool, creamy, smooth, dreamy. Your dessert is waiting just around the corner at McDonald's. Using the wrong water proofer can cost you thousands. Don't be taken for a ride. Demand Thompson's Water Seal. It has the highest level of water protection, guaranteed. Powerful original, new advanced Thompson's Water Seal. So, Mrs. Petty, we called Kyle at the track and said, let's have dinner for two. Dinner for two? Dinner for crew? They're close. Ma'am, were you on a cell phone? Yes, I was. Patty. I, I warned you about the static. That explains everything. Here, Sprint PCS built the only all-digital, all-PCS nationwide network, so your calls will be clear. Thank you. What about them? I'm thinking drive through 4,000 minutes for $39.99 from Sprint. At Renna Center, you're already pre-approved. Yeah, that's pretty good. So just come in, pick out whatever you want, and in most cases, it's delivered the same day. Stuff like furniture, computers, TVs. Doggone remote. And now, when you get select items during dollar days, you can add on another item for next to nothing. Call 1-800-205-2005 for the nearest door. 1-800-205-2005 for Renna Center. Hey, I like this stuff. You go to the races. You watch them on TV. Still got the itch for more? Try fantasy racing at NASCAR.com. Just log on to America Online, enter keyword NASCAR, or visit NASCAR.com. That's where fans like you can scratch that itch. You build your team, you go racing, you take no prisoners. Fantasy racing at NASCAR.com. Where else you gonna get this stuff? The all-new NASCAR.com. America Online, keyword NASCAR. Welcome back to the Pepsi 400 on Fox. 
Michael Waltrip, who won the 2001 Daytona 500 in his 463rd Winston Cup race, his first and only career victory. Let's bring you up to date. He currently leads now. Lap two, Tony Stewart with Sadler and Kenseth contributing, spins three times out of the race and repairs. Johnny Benson into the wall, three cracked ribs. Remember, he had earlier uh, injuries with ribs during the season. Then Steve Park, as you see Kevin Harvick, the pole sitter being shuffled to the back. Steve Park getting into trouble with Mike Wallace. That's the uh, carrot top car. Wallace has since come back in the race, and Kurt Busch having a Martha Stewart night, getting himself into a lot of trouble. First of two penalties for him. Jeff Gordon had the lead, but then had a, a punctured tire, fell a lap behind, trying to get his lap back. And as we uh, take a look right now, we've had uh, five different leaders, four lead changes, five cautions, and two cars current, currently officially out of the race. The visa summary as you get a look at the uh, average speed just over 183 miles per hour. Jeff Hammond with about 54 laps to go. We're coming up on pit stops, and this could be critical time here for strategy. This right here will be the time when the crews are already being told, guys, we got to make one more stop. We come down pit road. First and foremost, drivers don't speed. Pit crews, five off, five off. Please don't beat us if we've got a chance to win tonight. I'm sure that Michael Walker's crew talked to his crew chief, Slugger Laddie, earlier, and he said that's one thing about our whole team. It's stepped up here lately. We don't need to let Michael down if we come down pit road, so it's going to be really interesting when it comes time, comes time for pit stops. All right, one of the surprises of the weekend, Dave Blaney currently running sixth, and let's uh, get a check on uh, his car with Steve Burns. Chris, they start at 30th, having a great run. Ryan Pemberton, pit stop's about to happen. What we do to that 77 car? Oh, we're running pretty good right now. It starts out a little funky there at the beginning of the run. It kind of car dances around, but uh, if he holds it on the bottom, he seems like he can hold his line, uh, keep a lot of momentum off the corner. So uh, towards the end of the long run, I don't think we're going to make any changes here. We're going to have about 50 laps on our tires at the end of the race uh, and hope for the best. Back upstairs. Ryan Newman, number 12, battling Dale Earnhardt Jr. for second. The car right behind leader Michael Waltrip is Jeff Gordon trying to get back on the lead lap. There's Waltrip's teammate Earnhardt Jr., the number eight, not being not able to be of any help to Michael right now, but Michael's going to have to deal with Gordon sooner or later. Look at the run Dave Blaney, the 77, is getting on the high side. He's got help from Sterling Marlin in the 40 car as well. Almost would have slipped in there in yeah. front of Dale Jarrett, but knew there isn't enough room right there. I'm going to be a little nervous around that 12 and 77 right now. The 12's a little bit reckless, been moving around a lot, lane, one lane to the other. And then Blaney doing a great job, but uh, has the least amount of experience of, other than uh, Ryan Newman. You know, Daryl, just to follow up on Jeff Hammond on the strategy, as he mentioned, we only have one more stop. There's no question we've got about 50 laps on our tires. I'm going to give you four tires. This may be the tires that we end on, but I'm also running up down pit road. I don't want to be on pit road by myself because I have to have a drafting partner, but I don't want to be on there with people all around me because then you end up possibly like Todd Bodine and Robbie Gordon. I don't want to be beating and banging. I want clean pit road, clean pit stall to come into. Yeah, and a big problem is, is when everybody tries to come in at once, Larry, getting off the racetrack is a big problem. It can be, it can be pretty exciting. So pit stops will be coming most likely when we come back. 109 laps complete in Daytona and the Pepsi 400 on Fox. Pushing myself to the limit is what this is all about. And I need an antiperspirant that can keep up. All the clear gels that I've tried, they just don't work for me. But now there's new high endurance clear gel. It protects against wetness better than the leading gel. Guaranteed. Try it. If you don't like it, Old Spice will buy you a stick of something else. A clear gel that strong? I'm there. New Old Spice High Endurance Clear Gel. All oh, right, the number 99 Aaron's Dream Machine. Oh, yeah, ain't she a beauty? Of course, she don't compare to the wife, though. <laughs> really, these are the true Aaron's Dream Machines, the products we all dream about owning. And at Aaron's, everyone's automatically pre-approved with no credit required? Yeah, and you get the guaranteed lowest price, too. So you can afford this awesome RCA 52-inch big screen TV with picture-in-picture, -picture, big speaker sound, and free screen protector. And I'm really pre-approved? That's right. So let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. Welcome to La Bacage Total. La Bacage Total. Where you can indulge yourself with tender grilled all-white meat chicken, seasoned rice, and beans. La Bacage Total. 
Don't you deserve freshly prepared salsa, crisp lettuce, and zesty dressing? Isn't it time you had it all with Taco Bell's new freshly prepared zesty chicken border bowl? The answer is simply, duh. To get the total package, stick outside the park. All right, Rob. Oh, hey, Miss Larson. Linda will be down in a second. All right. Nice caravan. Thanks. I used to have a van. I can't believe my dad let you drive the Viper. Yeah, I, well, I got into him. Dodge Caravan, offering a power sliding door, a power rear hatch, and the kind of room you'll really dig. No matter how big your thirst, 7-Eleven has a fountain drink to fit like an ice-cold Dr. Pepper. Is there anything in here for a headache? My parents should have something. Oh, never mind. I found it. Well, why don't you come out of the pool and get something to eat? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm good here. Thanks. I, I love swimming. What'd you do? I was in the pool for six hours. <laughs> Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. Let's have a wrestling match right here in the water. No, no, I'm hungry. I'm hungry now. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by Miller Lite. Life is best told at a place called Miller Time. 48 laps to go in the Pepsi 400. It's been 50 laps since the last restart. Jeffrey Bodine and Stacy Compton are the first two drivers to come to Fit Road making green flag pit stops. And Darrell, I want to follow up on something you talked about, and that's getting on the pit road as we start seeing a lot of cars come to pit road. In this race last year, some top race cars were taken out by not by beating and banging on each other, wrecking coming to pit road. Yeah, well, what happens is, is the guy in front starts, if you got to get your hand up, you got to come off turn two over there, and you got to start waving to everybody behind you, tell them, I'm going to pit this time by. You can't come down here and surprise them off turn four and try to drive on pit lane. Who did we see at Talladega? Sterling, was it Sterling Marlin? Uh, who cut down at turn three instead of yeah. getting over at turn two and and then and, and then you can yeah. uh, you can come down here and you gotta lock up the brakes and smoke the tires and the guy behind you sees the smoke and then everybody panics so getting on the pit lane here is gonna be real, real critical. You've been riding around here too with the brakes are all cold. You gotta remember to warm those brakes up a little before you come to pit road. Now let's point out. Jeff Gordon is no longer right behind race leader Michael Waltrip. He got shuffled back a bit. Nobody has taken mercy with him at no. all. <laughs> Not at all. Terry Labonte is in. Jeremy Mayfield. Brett Bodine. Hutch Strickland has made his pit stop, and so is Casey Atwood, who was the fastest qualified dodge in the field. Well, when you got Jeff Gordon in the situation he's in right now, a lot of times he's sitting there and you wonder what he's holding. Right now, you know he's not holding anything. These are all scheduled pit stops, and we pretty much know everybody making stops now, they will be able to go to the end of this race should it go green. And it has a green flag look to it right yes, now. Yes, it does. The way the ball's spread out here, unless somebody just has a problem, a single car incident, I don't see any big accidents in, the, in our near future. A lot of deal-making up and down pit road at this stage in the race. Dave Blaney's team trying to link up with Sterling Marlin to try to pit together. See what I'm talking about? See that car coming on pit road with all four tires locked up? That's Matt Kenseth, that he's in that very first pit, so he had to get slowed down in yeah. a hurry. Now, if you're coming off of turn four and you see that, you're not sure what's happening. Another thing these guys are trying to make sure, Mike, if you're going to pit with somebody, and I think everybody will change four tires, you're trying to make sure somebody you're going to pit with don't change two, and you change four, right. you lose all that ground. Well, but but set, getting out in front all by yourself is no advantage. You're a setting up. We saw with Jeff Gordon got a fast car, but you don't want to get out there all by yourself. They'll just chase you down and pass you. So Bill you got to work with somebody. Right. Bill Elliott, Bobby Labonte, Ricky Craven have been in, Matt Kenseth, Kyle Petty, Elliott Sadler for the Wood Brothers, the winningest team here. And now a big group coming in, including Mike Skinner, Joe Nemechek, Ricky Rudd, Daytona 500 winner Warren Burton, Bobby Hamilton, and Jimmy Johnson. Dick? Mike Skinner skids to a stop, but he stops exactly perfectly, right where he should stop in his pit stall. He has finished as well as third in this event. That back in 1998, that's going to be a four-tire stop for Skinner's crew. They got the right side done, rolling around to the left side now. Some of the teams taking longer to put the fuel in. Skinner, gone. 
Steve Park is in. Is Sterling Marlin coming and Blaney coming with him and several more? Guys. Several guys. Dale Jarrett leads this group in with Marlin, Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, and Blaney. Now, Dale Jarrett, he has to go all the way to the end of pit road. He's in the very last pit before leaving. Steve Burns. Dave Blaney has never won a Winston Cup Series race. He had a clear shot in because Tony Stewart had already pitted. There will be no adjustments to this number 77 of Dave Blaney. Left side tires going on the 77 of Blaney. No other adjustments to that race car. Let's go to Matt. The 88 trouble on the left rear. Dale Jarrett trouble on the left rear. A slow stop. They made a major wedge adjustment. Jarrett was a little bit tight. Let's see if Michael Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jr. come in this time. Jeff Burton locks up the brakes coming to pit road. It is Waltrip, Earnhardt, Brian Newman is in, Mark Burton, and Jeff Burton. Now, Michael Waltrip's pitting pit 25 right here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has to go all the way to the end of pit road to pit three. Dick Michael Waltrip, a nice job of bringing the car in. He stopped exactly where he needed to stop, right in front of his crew. That gives them the best possible opportunity for a fast pit stop. One round into the left rear. Four tires. He's going to take four. And yes, Michael, a nice stop. Gone. A four-tire change for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Trying to win back-to-back -back Pepsi 400. They made an air pressure adjustment in the right front. They went back to a setting they had earlier in the race. He was loose earlier, but he was recently tight. Michael Waltrip gets out before Earnhardt Jr. And Jeff Burton had trouble leaving his pit. Needed a push from the crew to get the car restarted. He came in so hot, locked the tires up, was sliding all the way to his pit box, loaded the carburetor up, killed the motor, and couldn't get it cranked back up. But there, I know we still have a few cars to pit here on the green, but I think there was good planning. We didn't see a bunch of cars at one time on pit road. We didn't see a lot of cars that was in two pit boxes beside one another. Yeah, these guys were spread out pretty good up and down pit road for coming in the way they did. You're going to see the difference in pit stop pretty pretty plainly here. See Mike Skinner in the four, Ricky Rudd in the 28, Ward Burton in the 22. That group was running in that second pack, 10th to about 12. And here's Michael and the Dale Jr. racing with Sterling. The battle resumes just about where it left off. And here comes the, the 12 and the 2 right behind him. Dale Jarrett's coming right here, and there goes the 6. There goes the 77. So they're, they're just, in a, just in a few seconds of each other. We cycle through pit stops, and Michael Waltrip is the leader. Sterling Marlin, Dale Earnhardt Jr. right with him. It's about half a second back to Ryan Newman and Rusty Wallace. I tell you, Rusty Wallace in that two car, he's had a few complaints about his pit crew this year, but he can't complain about them on this pit stop right here. They paid off for it. No, sir. And, of course, Michael's team did a great job, too. So all those guys did a great job right there in that first six cars. The one car that's missing from this top five, we heard our guys talk about it. Dale Jarrett had that problem on it left rear. Plus, he's, he's back to six. I don't like where he's pitting for a green flag stop because you can't get up to speed if you're almost a turn one. And you got to go the whole length of the pit road with uh, a lot of eyes on you, Larry. It's good for caution stops not good for green stops so Dale Jarrett falls to 2.4 seconds off the lead Mark Martin 3.2 seconds back and Dave Blaney 3.7 seconds back so the big gainer in those green flag pit stops was Rusty Wallace and there's the Billy Wilburn led crew that fits for Rusty 120 laps complete ordinary people take center stage in the most outrageous talent show ever <laughs> Thirty seconds to fame, premiering Wednesday, July seventeenth on Fox. If you thought the creator of Buffy gave new blood to vampires, wait till you see what Joss Whedon does to space. Everybody, hold on to something. Firefly. <laughs> the adventure begins Friday's Fox Fall. Good evening, I'm Dana Roselli. Up next, Rochester goes back in time to 1827 for a celebration of freedom. And down the road in Munford, it was opening day for the 19th Century Baseball League. The 10 o'clock news. Watch tonight. Where's the beer? Bad dream. Hey, pass me a beer. 
Blue sky, sunlight, blue light. Are you ready for this area's exclusive cutting-edge raceway and hobby center? It's here. Pit Stop Raceway and Hobby Center's grand opening. It's extreme slot car racing. Pit Stop is the area's largest slot car facility with a huge selection of radio-controlled cars, trucks, planes, boats, watercraft, collectible miniatures, model rockets, and hobby accessories. Come and see them for their grand opening. Remember the name. Pit Stop Raceway and Hobby Center, your exclusive cutting-edge racing. <laughs> Trex, the deck of a lifetime. Visit this local dealer and find out why more people are building with Trex Easy Care Decking. Need to get up early? Then watch the 10 o'clock news on Fox Rochester. The people at NASCAR want to know how bad have you got it? Have you named family members after your favorite driver? Down, Ken Freighter. Down. <laughs> Do you use racing flags to warn others of dangerous situations? Now, be honest. How bad have you got it? In just three days, the 2002 All-Star Game on Fox. One hundred twenty-four laps complete of the Pepsi 400, 160 make up the race. Michael Waltrip leading Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt Jr. The drivers eligible for the Winston Noble five million dollar bonus, led by Mark Martin in seventh, Ricky Rudd in tenth. They're each paired with a fan who could also win a million dollars if one of those five cars goes to victory lane. And how these cars qualified? They were the top five finishers from Lowe's Motor Speedway back in May. Tony, Tony Stewart. Stewart. 20 car has more problems on the back stretch. We stay green so far. A spin off turn two onto that paved apron area and a lot of smoke from Stewart's car. Caution will come out for the sixth time tonight. Boy, Tony Stewart's poor old car looks like it's been demolition derby. Stewart, who had fought his way up to fifth in the points after being the first car out of the Daytona 500. Brought out was involved in the first caution of the night at lap two, and now he brings out the sixth yellow flag. I don't know if Gordon is uh, he's not in a position to get a lap back, is he? No, he lost a lot of ground uh, right before that stop and on the pit stop itself. Elliot Sadler trying to get a lap back, short by two car lengths. The Wood Brothers who lead all car owners with 12 victories in this race. The Petties have 11, Hendrick Motorsports 7, and Elliott just shy of beating back, leader buddy. Michael Walker to the line. That would have been big for him, because the only one lap down, that'd put him back on the lead lap. See what happened to Tony Stewart. Oh, he just, thing gets loose on him, starts coming around, coming around, and spins it down on the apron. gets loose. Here she comes. You see all that paved area there, Mike? Larry, that didn't used to be there. It used to be grass. And if that had a, when it was grass, you'd flip over every time you got down in there. And what we have to remember, with all the repairs they've done to that race car, I mean, that can definitely change the handling oh, yeah. of how that car drives. A long, tough night for Tony Stewart. Michael Waltrip leads as we're under the sixth caution flag of the evening. Le peloton entre dans la ville, ils ne sont plus très loin de la ligne d'arrivée. Deux grands champions, Bornet et Stiefel, se battent l'un contre l'autre. Ils sont en tête, mais qui va gagner Bornet, Stiefel, Stiefel, Bornet, c'est très indécis. Ah, ça y est, la ligne d'arrivée est en vue. C'est Gordon Je n'ai jamais vu une course aussi excitante. Gordon Mais c'est James Gordon James Gordon dans sa chambre. Chevy Monte Carlo, wherever there's a winner's circle, we'll be there. 
in my family if one wants pizza the other wants chinese even their stomachs don't agree if one gets indigestion the other one gets heartburn if one gets nausea the other one gets well so i get pepto-bismol as it coats it relieves heartburn indigestion upset stomachs nausea and diarrhea it'd take a box full of other medicines to do what pepto-bismol does agree agree, agree. Pepto-Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. What's this? It's a credit card. Okay. It's not scanning. You have to open it up. Introducing Discover to Go. That's a crazy looking credit card. Wow, look at that. A great new way to carry your Discover card. Wipe it through there and there we've got it. There's a place for my keys. <laughs> I love it. It's new. I figured that one out, Frank. Very futuristic. Same account numbers, same cash back bonus program, but not like any credit card you've seen before. Sorry, I got that receipt in here somewhere. Driver's license, bus transfer, dollar off fish sticks. Actually? Floss. <laughs> Just in case. Um, movie stub, mint. Actually, we keep everything right here. Just in case. Right. Just in case people lose stuff. That's why we can store purchase and warranty information automatically, so you won't have to search anymore. Circuit City, we're with you. Floss. Who flosses anyway? I floss. I floss too. Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by the joy of Pepsi, the choice of Victory Lane, by Team Monte Carlo, the cars more champions depend on, Chevy, we'll be there, by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines, and by Visa, the official card of NASCAR. 320 of 400 miles complete here at Daytona International Speedway. Now, Michael Waltrip came to the line, and Elliot Sadler was not able to get a lap back from Michael Waltrip, but let's listen in on some of the strategy involved here. Cross it out. Cross it out. Cross it out. All right. All right, 21 wants a little help. Back. 21 wants a little help. It's up to you. Where is the 24? Where is the 24? Race back. Tell him to race back, Danny. Don't worry about it. Keep taking it. Before it's just now into one, but he took the yellow. Before it took the yellow. 21 wants a little help. It's up to you. Coming hard. It's your inside. Well, that, see, that, that kind of ties into what we were saying earlier. If, where's the 24? Don't want to let him have his lap back. But the 21, yeah, we can let him have his lap back because he can't beat us. But Michael couldn't slow down until he knew that Gordon had already taken the caution. And by then, it was too late to be of any help till he had sat. Dick Bergman. Slugger Labby doing a great job calling the shots tonight for Michael Waltrip. Michael has repeatedly given Slugger credit for the fact that he is having the best year he has had in a very long time in Winston Cup racing. After the last pit stop, Slugger radioed to Michael, said your tires look great. That's an indication the chassis is running very well. Just keep doing what you're doing. Slugger Labby, the crew chief, has never won one of these Winston Cup races as a crew chief. He has been trying for 18 years. Sterling Marlin pitted on lap 117. They added a pound of air to the right rear. Tony Glover's been saying, Sterling, keep an eye on where you're on the racetrack. Evaluate how you're going to make your moves. And right now, we'll go to Jeff Hammond. Right now, I'm sitting down inside our Ford Cutaway car. And as you can see, in my little side mirror right here, it's kind of difficult, especially with the wind in that up. And I haven't even got a helmet on. So you can imagine what it must be like during a race when you've got all these head restraints around you and a helmet. Very limited peripheral vision. So you've got to really be very dependent upon the side mirrors, your rear view mirrors. But at the end of this race, the key maybe to winning will be your spotter. What he tells you, what's going on behind you or in front of you, may be the key to winning tonight. We always hear about blocking, and one of the guys that will be helping that 
Cali take place will be the spotters upstairs. Spotters are very important, especially with the fuel laps we've got to go. Yeah, and your spotter's Chris Myers, so I'd tie that tie a little tighter, Jeff. Yeah, Curtis Turner used to drive in a tuxedo, Jeff, so he, he kind of back to the past. <laughs> nice looking outfit. Thank you. Now, under this caution, the top 18 cars stayed out. We got 30 cars on the lead lap, but about 12 cars at the back. Terry Labonte, Brent Bodine, Bobby Labonte, Ward Burton, Matt Kenseth, Jeffrey Bodine, Kyle Petty, Todd Bodine, Jeff Green, Stacy Compton, Polson, or Kevin Harvick, and Casey Atwood decided to pit. Nothing to lose. Make your car better, but the leaders all stayed out. They can make it to the end. And I don't hear anybody complain too much about handling problems tonight. And I want to tell you the difference between this race and the February race, the Daytona 500. The week before we come down here for the 500, they have the 24 hours of Daytona. They drag cars around this joint all night long, le leaking oil everywhere. The track's a lot slicker than it is here tonight. For all the 140 people that each week that make NASCAR on Fox a reality, for all of their hard effort and their passion for the sport, let's crank it up. I say one crank more time, green strap flag, that green TV flag down. Sadler was trying to get his lap back without success. Here comes Junior slicing through the middle of Sadler and Sterling Marlin to try to join his teammate Michael Waltrip at the front. Well, this is nail-biting time again. Here we are near the end of the race. Everybody's kind of trying real hard. Guys are lapped down. Guys trying to get themselves in a position to win this thing. Don't want to make any mistakes now. Matt. Well, Mike, under that caution, Tony Urey Jr., the car chief on the eight, asked his cousin Dale Jr. how his race car was. Junior responded, the car is good, very good. I'm just thinking, right now, he is second behind his teammate, Michael Waltrip. Tony Uri Jr. responded, well, the house is even. They've helped us win a couple. Right now, we're helping them. Meanwhile, Dale Jarrett, remember, they made a wedge adjustment on his last stop. Jarrett reports in the 88 car is not as good as it was in the previous run. The 12, right in the middle, Ryan Newman has all the, the look of a pinball wizard okay. in the middle there. We talked about Elliott Sandler for 21 trying to get his lap back. Ricky Craven in the tied 32 car, along with Jeff Gordon there in the 24 on the outside. They'd like to get up there because, once again, they're trying to get that lap back, too, as the laps close down. Yeah, when you're the point leader and you're hung up there like that, Sterling just took a big, deep sigh of relief to get out of that mess. say everybody right now it's just really got to be careful because uh, we're setting up for what has the appearance of a disaster well these guys they slice and dice two or three wide we talked about it all night that just lets the whole bunch get back together again yeah that caution flag really closed everybody back up gave everybody another it's like a whole new race and the toughest parts are right here when they're coming straight on toward the spotters and coming out of the trioval right here when the spotters are looking at the taillight panels. They're of little help to the drivers in those two short shoots. Well, remember when the race started and I told you the center of there, right along in here was like the eye of the storm? Well, the storm is brewing again. 
all it takes is for one of those front cars to come up off of turn two or turn four, have to get up out of the throttle just a teeny bit because the car pushes and you get run into from behind. And here we go. And as the lap counter ticks down, the pulse rate ticks up. 26 to go. It's called the intensity. The intensity is picking up. Jeff Gordon in 32nd place. One lap. Whoa, there, there you go. Jared. This is it, guys. Jared, Nemechek, Jeff Burton, Mike Skinner. It's One over. Car hard up into the wall, joined by another. And they just keep wrecking. And the hits keep on coming. And the big hit was Joe Nemechek, Brett Bodine on fire. We'll have to race back to the caution flag. Here comes, I think this is Sadler again. It is, Elliot Sadler. Yeah, but here comes Gordon back. Back, right back here behind him. Yeah, that's off the 24 four. car right there. He's trying to get his lap back as well. Elliot Sadler looks like he will accomplish it. Jeff Gordon will not. And I don't think Michael Waldrum, you mentioned it, Darrell, had a problem giving that 21 car lap back. Down, down not going to give that 24 car. Dale Jarrett is moving around inside the number 88. He's going to climb out. Todd Bodine is out. Uh, rather, Brett Bodine, he owns that car and that race team. And of that number 11, there is little left. Matt Kenseth is involved. Heavy nose damage. But I'm worried about Joe Nemechek. That car hit the turn one wall with tremendous force. There's Mike Skinner. That's Dale Jarrett. Jarrett's out, and he's looking over the car. And there's Martha, Martha. Nemechek, Joe's mom. Last night, Martha was celebrating Joe's victory. Tonight, she's in tears. I don't know whoever got down the apron got turned. Mike Skinner has come to rest. Had a good run going there. See Bobby Labonte. All kinds of damage to that car. Now Brett Bodine's out of that car. And the good news about the Joe Nemechek car was they were attending to the car, not to the driver's compartment. So we can presume from that that Joe's OK. And here's Mike Skinner moving around. And the face of Martha Nemechek, remember she lost a son in a race car crash at Homestead, Miami, lost her younger son, John. But the window net is down on Joe Nemechek's number 25. And that's yeah. always a sign that he's a, we believe he's gotten out of the car. We'll await confirmation. Joe Nemechek is out of the car. Brett Bodine is out of his car. The wings will be extra crispy tonight. This starts by somebody getting crowded down on the apron here. Oh, Dale Jarrett. Dale Jarrett goes Gets down. Fun. In like, front of the 21 car, wasn't it? Oh, Jeff no, that Burton. was the 99 car. Oh, man, you're right, Mike. Nemechek took a hard lick. Then the four car. Saw the lick that Brett Bodine and 11 took there in front of Joe Nemechek. Steve Park. Look at Blaney in the 77 all the way down on apron, along with Jimmy Johnson Jimmy in Johnson. the 48 as well. Nemechek gets hit once and then straight oh. up and into the wall. The drivers call it the big one. And Daryl, I think we've accepted it's somewhat inevitable in this time of race. Let's see if Jeff Gordon gets through this. Yeah, he got through. He tried to get his lap back, but uh, Dale Jarrett's going to pay the price here. The 99 gets a run on him, and he tries to block him. The 99 got into him, and the rest. Just look at the cars through his windshield. You just wonder, is it ever going to quit hitting? Mike, I've seen this. I, 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 I've seen these things so many times that I just I had that, as I just said, I had that feeling that we saw it, it, it was coming. Dale Jarrett walking back from turn one. 
I'm sure Dale is uh, quite dejected. He had a great car. He had a top five car, certainly. Had a top five car, and uh, Jared a wave to the crowd. I believe he waved off a ride in the ambulance earlier. They will insist that he goes to the care center. Uh, it's kind of mandatory, right? I think right now he just wants to walk back to the pits by himself. Yep. Uh, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, he's he's probably a little upset with himself. Here's Brent Bodine, who is okay. A little water there. And uh, it's another truck Dale doesn't want to drive. Well, it's a, what happens here is, you know, uh, Burton had a run on the 88, and the 88 tried to block him, and they came together, and when they did, it just uh, Boy, started this. Jimmy Spencer cut left, and I think he missed it. Just barely. Terry because Levani there. Nemechek came straight up the track in front of Spencer's 41, and so did Skinner. Look at Ricky Rudd in the 28 car. He's going to go to the bottom of the racetrack and just barely get by wow. Jeff Burton. See, these cars will go up and down. They, get, they start at the bottom, they go up, hit the wall, they'll come down, and sometimes they'll go right back up. That's why it's so hard to miss a wreck here. There's just no way that the cars will stay in one spot. Jimmy Johnson creeping through. This is coming to the start-finish line. You see the 99 drop down to the inside. Got a run on Jarrett. Starts to look to the inside. I, I, it's kind of hard to say what happened there. Uh, it looked like Dale tried to block him, moved down a little bit, and when he did, they come together. Not so Boy, sure. that lick again by Joe Nemechek. That's, that was a hard lick. Well, so and, was the 11 car. I yeah. mean, those two cars really, they cracked that wall hard. It was like Skinner was a croquet ball and just sent Brett Bodine into the wall. Saw Steve Park in the one car involved as well. This next replay in real time. Mayfield in 19 all the way out in the grass. Folks, I've been in these things and I tell you, TV just, we just can't do the, we just can't do it justice as to what that feels like. Caution is out at Daytona International Speedway for this grinding crash with 21 laps to go. Fresh beer is just like fresh bread. Beer is a food product and fresh beer will always taste more drinkable. It'll be lighter, it'll be cleaner, and it'll be the very best beer you can buy. No brewer will argue that Fresh beer is better beer. If you can get the freshest beer possible, you're going to get the very best beer possible. When you compete in the world's fastest sport, you and your dreams of success live by one simple rule. Never drive alone. life by the horns. Intelligence is their power. Fire is their weapon. Two glands in the mouth. Natural napalm. Good luck. Man is their prey. On July 12th, the battle ignites. Matthew McConaughey. 
Christian Bale. Reign of Fire. Ready PG-13. Starts July 12th. Dessert is waiting just around the corner at McDonald's. Craftsman. Built to handle whatever Mother Nature dishes out. And even the things she doesn't. Over the years, no mower has been more bumped, scraped, and abused than Craftsman. Why face your lawn with anything else? Craftsman. Welcome back live on Fox, the Pepsi 400. At least 14 cars involved in the crash. Every driver is okay at this point. No serious injury, including Dale Jarrett in the 88 car who walked back, and it was a long walk because an ambulance did not appear in the, uh, in the amount of time in which he got out of his car. More on the accident. In fact, let's get a check uh, with uh, Dale Jarrett and our Matt Yoakum is standing by. Matt. And Dale Jarrett has finally walked back to his pit here at the head of pit road. And DJ, first off, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, just uh, unfortunate, man. We had a really good car, and uh, I was just, I don't know, maybe it's my fault. I don't know. I was just trying to take my position and get by Mark there, and. Uh, got hit in the back and uh, I guess that's just part of this kind of racing and uh, unfortunately we didn't make it through the night. Things happen so fast here don't they? Yeah they do yeah you know you have a caution there at the end and you know it kind of bunches everybody up and everybody gets racy and uh, you know just a lot of things are going to happen there so uh, it's unfortunate again we had a really good race car and I uh, thought we might have a shot to run the top five I don't know if we could do anything with Michael and and uh, Junior there but uh, just didn't quite make it. Now, you had the long stroll back, which got all the fans up on their feet. Why the walk back instead of the ambulance? It wasn't an ambulance came and picked me up until I'd walked halfway here. So if they can't get there any faster than that, I can get here on my own. Good news is Dale Jarrett's okay. All right, he might have driven the, the big brown truck faster than the ambulance got there, too. These are the drivers involved in the crash at this point, officially those that we have checked. Remember, last night, there were 15 cars involved in the Bush race, and at uh, Talladega, uh, there were uh, 24 cars involved in the big one there, as the drivers refer to the wreck. 24 cars involved in, in that wreck uh, with uh, Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers in our studios here just above uh, Victory Lane. So this happening with about 25 laps to go. And you indicated before, when you were down at the cutaway car, uh, certainly with vision and how things were, were bunched up. Uh, this is just part of it. Is there any way to avoid something like this? Chris, I mean, we, we keep trying all the time to come up with a solution. You know, we, we put, put spotters up there to give everybody an idea how your man's making a move on you. Hold your line. You've got mirrors. We've got side mirrors. We've got rear view mirrors. We have two-way communication all the way around the racetrack. Yet we still have these big ones because these guys, at the end of a race, they're going to get to where they're pushing and shoving and trying to hold their line and to hold that position at all costs. And what happens is when, I, when they get together, multi-car accidents. We should mention Michael Waltrip uh, and, of course, Dale Earnhardt Jr. still leading in the DEI cars. But uh, real, real quick, uh, and as Matt uh, was told by Dale Jarrett, yeah. he said maybe it was my fault. It looked like the blocking is what caused that. Well, it looked like he was trying to, you know, keep uh, the 99 car of Jeff Burton making a move on him right there late to try to get position. And we saw all night long the guys out front seem to do much, much better. All right. So the big one that has hit. We're about to go green. Continuing the finish. You're watching the Pepsi 400 on Fox, and we'll have more from Daytona in just a moment.
What makes a great car company is the passion. You know, racing is such an important part of, of Ford's history, both with the cars themselves, some of the best drivers ever to, to drive, and then the fans. It's the man or the woman who's got the car in the garage, that tinkers all week, and then takes it to the track on the weekend and, uh, and lets loose. I love it. In most cases, Rent-A-Center delivers whatever you want the same day. Furniture, TVs. Dog on remote. Now get select items and add another item for next to nothing. Call 1-800-205-2005 for Rent-A-Center. Hey, I like this stuff. Kimmy, let me handle this. No, Piggy, I want to do this my way. What? Dale, I know it's not that easy being you. No. And I sure don't want to tell you what to do. You're blowing it! I believe we should all follow our own dream. Oh, for the love of... And that's why I think it'd be terrific if you just... Doc! Where's the truck, Jarrett? I can't believe this. The Pepsi 400 on Fox is brought to you by UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR. We want to race the truck. People love the truck. 17 laps to go in the Pepsi 400. Jeff Burton bumping Dale Jr. Uh, Dale, excuse me, Dale Jarrett triggered his 15 car crash. We can't talk to Burton because he's one of the drivers that's still in the race. As we go back to green. Gordon's up there alongside of Michael. Definitely in the best place he's been in all night to get a lap back. But I tell you, I don't see anybody challenging my brother and Dale Jr. It looks to me like they'll shove each other home first and second. Just depends on which way they want to go. Let's get an update on Earnhardt for Matt. Well, Mike, on lap 139, there was some interesting conversation exchange between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Urie Jr. Dale said, I think I will help Michael win it. It's up to you, but Tony Jr. jumped in, but that's like the Cowboys winning because the Redskins let him. Dale said, it's about me and teammates. It's about making DEI the one to beat. Right now, that's what I'm thinking. Tony said, I was thinking of the last race when they tried to beat you, but they couldn't make the run. Dale said, do you want me to win it? Tony said, yes, I want you to win the darn thing. These guys bust their butt all week on this race car. Tony said, if you drive like you can drive, the fans a dilemma to, to put Dale Jr. in because Michael has sort of been the, the bridesmaid and uh, I'm sure that Michael thinks that he's it's his turn as he would say. I tell you who's not getting any help Jeff Gordon in that 24 car he was second when they came by on the restart he was kicked all the way back to about the 13th position he has no help from anybody. I believe the thing that's going to make Dale Jr. either win this race or run second is if he can get somebody to help him. I don't know that he can just pull out and pass Michael all by himself. I just think he's going to have to get somebody good up there behind him to make it happen. Steve Burns is with Steve Park, whose car was taken out in that crash. Mike, let's check in. Steve, are you okay? And tell us what happened. Yeah, I'm fine. Just disappointed. And uh, just we're hoping to avoid the, the big wreck. And sure enough, it happened again. So uh, somebody looked like somebody up front turned Jared around or hit him. Or we just got caught up in the, in the melee. So uh, but we just can't forget it's 4th of July. So even though I'm disappointed with our, with our wreck, I uh, just want to thank all the uh, all the veterans that are out there and all the guys and the young guys that are uh, across the seas that have given us the opportunity to, to be free and race these race cars. So, uh, like I said, I'm disappointed for the Pennzoil team, but, um, you know, our, our thoughts and prayers go out with all the people. Thanks, Steve. All right, thank you. Tony Stewart has taken his car to the garage area. Now, now what you're going to see here, Mike, if, if Dale Jr. is trying to win this race, he's going to let Michael get out there in front of him a little bit at times. He's going to let Michael beat him down into turn one. He's going to let Michael get a little gap, pull out there a little bit. And you'll say, oh, Michael's pulling away. What that does, that gives Dale Jr. and if Rusty can help him, a run to get a run on him down the back to get a nose under him going into three. Darrell, you know, we talk a lot about teammates. Well, we have two sets of teammates in the top five, but I just don't know that it can happen here with teammates. We've got Ryan Newman, Rusty Wallace. I mean, when you got that many cars, you've got to look after number one yourself. Yeah. The only, the, it, I don't think it can help you necessarily, but what you don't want to do is hurt your teammates. Absolutely. I mean, you don't want to put yourself in a position where somebody else would beat both of you. 
So that's what you... It's just a tough place to be. Richard Childers used to tell Dale Earnhardt, Mike Skinner, you beat one another if you want to, but don't you help somebody beat my other guy. That's exactly right, and I think that's what they're kind of faced with right here. The hungriest driver in that front pack has to be Rusty Wallace. He's never won a Winston Cup points race at Daytona. He does not yet have a top five finish this season. Sixth at Atlanta is his best. He and Billy Wilburn believe they have a car that can win. He sits third behind the two Earnhardt Incorporated Chevrolet. He's been gaining on Daytona, though, Mike. Last 10 Daytona starts, top 11 finishes in all but one of those races. They've been gaining on it slowly but surely. And you, you missed a big one by running up front, but so far, he's missed every big wreck they've had. Talladega, Daytona, he's been ahead of it. Or gotten through it somehow. And that's big points, days. Big points points paying days. Now, if you believe in Lucky Charms, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on the cover of this week's Sports Illustrated. They devoted a whole issue to the jinx of being on the cover of that magazine. So if he wins, it will certainly upset that apple cart. It's probably about time. I, <laughs> tell you the truth, I wish you hadn't mentioned it. <laughs> I had forgotten about that because on the radio show the other morning, they were asking me about that very thing. I said, well, we'll see. And you know what? You'll see. If you come to 10 to go this time, right now, that top five or six, they look content, but you better look quick. They're not going to be content for long. Yeah. What's going to happen if somebody tries to make a move here, then it's going to really change everything. Because look how many cars are lined up in a row here. 10 to go. Caution. Caution is out. There's debris on the racetrack putting us under caution with exactly 10 laps to go. Now, where did Gordon go that time? There he is on the bottom right there. There you see him, but I think they took the caution. Yes, they took the caution coming to the line. Yeah, and he knows it now. Above the white line in turn two is where debris is reported. NASCAR, this speedway is so vast, they have observers stationed at various positions around the racetrack to make sure that there's nothing on the track that could provide a problem for one of the cars and in the interest of safety if there's especially metal debris on the racetrack they won't hesitate to throw the caution you see Billy Wilburn the crew chief for Rusty Wallace talking to one of the NASCAR officials right there I think one thing we can pretty much guarantee you the top cars top 10 12 14 cars they will stay out pitting is over with We'll be back for the finish of the Pepsi 400 as the screws turn a little tighter here in Daytona Beach. Hey. Hey. Hey, give me the wallet. Take it easy. It's my wallet. I accidentally mugged this guy. Oh. It's the exact same wallet, actually. Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. I, I just want to give you your wallet back, sir. The Insider Pizza from Pizza Hut is back and better than ever. Now with free extra toppings. When you buy the Insider for $10.99, you can get extra toppings or make it a meat lovers or supreme absolutely free. The Insider Pizza, $10.99 and free extra toppings for a limited time only at Pizza Hut. No matter how big your thirst, 7-Eleven has a fountain drink to fit like an ice-cold Dr. Pepper. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I have a moment of your time? True or false? I enjoy frosting in the morning. True. Raise the roof. Try to remain professional, sweets. True or false, sir? A nutritionally sound cereal is important to me. True. Bravo. Add a notch to the wheat's tally. Whatever. Okay. That's 43 likes for the sweet side and 43 likes for the wheat side. So what have we learned? I've learned time at the mall is better spent buying shirts. Shirts? You don't wear clothes and you have no arms. Speak for yourself. Hey, Kenny, thanks for setting up this workout with the WWE superstars. Yeah, suggesting they help us toughen up for the next race was a great idea. Did I say tough enough? I meant tough enough. Actually, Kenny, we meant tough enough, too. Oh, I don't think I'm going to like this. If he gets tired, he's got plenty of Stacker 2 inside his car. That's great, because Stacker 2 really does give you an extra boost of energy. And it helps burn fat and crush cravings. Stacker 2, it's the world's strongest fat burner. Rusty, help! Well, aloha. 
that means hello. Hey, if you make a collect call, dial in the center. It's 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -L -L it's free for you and cheap for them. That's odd. It's for you. <laughs> so weird. Hello? Save on every call. Use 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect hello? calls. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Max Life conditioned use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. And for a simple way to keep your tires looking great, use Eagle One Wet Tire Shine. At Midas, our knowledgeable technicians love cars. It's all we think about. Come in for great deals during the Midas National Brake Event. At Midas, we do more brakes than anyone else. And don't forget, Midas offers a lifetime nationwide guarantee. So stop by any Midas today. Midas, we do that. Really serious about fantasy racing? Then log on to America Online and go to NASCAR.com. Where else? The all-new NASCAR.com. America Online keyword NASCAR. Radio Shack trivia time. In 1988, NASCAR started restricting the engines at Daytona and Talladega. In 58 restrictor plate races, how many times has the pole sitter won? It's not many. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say five. Oh, well, not tonight. I can't, I can't think of any. Twice. Twice. Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon. I knew it was. Jarrett is sidelined and Gordon is a lap down, or rather. Yeah, one lap down in 24th position, matching his car number. Seven laps to go as they come by under caution, and the restart is waved off this time. Oh, and funny. now, excuse me, now they are going to give one to go. Now we have 23 cars on the lead lap. We're under that 10 lap rule. It will be a what we call a down finger restart. Single file lead lap cars only to the front. No double file restart. The hardest hit. In that big crash was Joe Nemechek, and he's just walked out of the care center. Here's Steve. Joe Nemechek just out of the care center. Joe, are you okay? Uh, I'm okay. You know, the worst thing, I hurt my foot, got caught up in the pedals and uh, bruised some bones in my feet. But uh, I'm good. You know, uh, I got to say thank God for the Hans. Uh, that thing took a heck of a hit. You know, I got turned just right, you know, inches from making it by. And... Uh, got turned just right, and that thing come back up and hit that wall awful hard. Uh, one of the hardest hits I've taken. Thanks, Joe. Glad you're okay. Yes, sir. And Mike, I, and Larry, I think you'll agree. As time goes by, somewhere down the road, people are going to look back and say, that Hans device, those safety devices that have been added to the driver will be the greatest safety invention that we ever came up with. The Hans is the head and neck support, ties into the helmet that prevents the driver's head from lurching forward in a, in a frontal crash like that one. We've had a lot of hard wow. crashes this year, and, and the only injury we've had in Winston Cup, severe injury in Winston Cup for Bush, really is Jeff Purvis up at Nazareth, and I don't think, you know, the head neck restraint device had nothing to do with that. Darrell, where do you want to be on this restart? We're going to have six laps to race. I want to be in that car right there, and I want to be right where it is. Michael Waltrip leading his DEI, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated teammate, Earnhardt Jr., Rusty Wallace in a Ford, Right behind Junior, Rusty has never won a cup race at Daytona. Dale Junior has preached teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. DEI, what's good for DEI? And if you're going to preach that, you got to practice it. Fourth is Sterling Marlin, the point leader. Fifth, the rookie, Wallace's teammate, Ryan Newman. Then Mark Martin, Jimmy Spencer's Dodge that squeaked through that crash. Jeremy Mayfield, Bill Elliott, and Todd Bodine, the top ten. Here we come. If you're going to do it, you got to do it now on this restart. You got to do it right now. See the group back there about 11th and 12th. Jeff Green and Stacey Compton, the only cars right now stepping out of line, the 30 and the 14. Rusty had some help. Now he's in a good spot to get a big, strong run off the of turn two. But he's sitting in it. He's kind of in the cradle right there. He's got nobody to help him. But here comes Newman up with Wallace trying to help. Matt? Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is trying to get the two to help him, but apparently Rusty Wallace is running warm, so he won't stay tucked up underneath the eight of Dale Earnhardt Jr. In fact, 
junior spotter Ty Norris about broke his radio jumping all over Wallace's spotter to try to help the eight. Boy, Rusty just put a block on his own teammate, and, I, and now it's going to cost him. But the good news for Michael and Dale Jr. is they're just pulling away. They stack up behind as Marlin has the inside. Mark Martin clawing for track position and Mayfield on the outside in that red dot. Well, the trouble is these two cars right here. I mean, they don't want to work together. They, they may be teammates, but somebody needs to tell them. Yeah, I mean, as long as they run side by side, I don't think one that gives no one to Dale Earnhardt Jr. to help go around Michael, but it's the greatest thing that can happen for those two guys up front. I mean, look where Michael and Dale Jr. are, and we're coming down here with five to go. And look at this wide behind them, Darrell. You talk about teammates, you do have Star Marlin in the 40 car. You have his teammate back there, Jimmy Spencer, in the 41 car. And Jimmy Spencer, he he dodged the big one. He's up there running in fifth right now. Well, they get sorted out here at the front. Uh, I think everything will work out fine. But, boy, Oof. Ryan Newman and Rusty were really going at it. Three wide all the way from 10th place on back. Four laps to go. Well, Jeff Bodine gets into time. They saved it. Holy cow. That's as close as you can come to reckon with that. Uh -oh, and here goes Junior by Michael. Now, where's Rusty going to go? Looks like he's going to stay with Michael on the bottom. Sterling Marlin in the 40. He's going to stay with Rusty. They're going to keep him the back. There's another car about to go. Cars are all over the place again. Ryan, Ryan Newman. 12 car. Dave Blaney in the 77 as well. And they're racing back to the caution. And this could be the race. And here comes Sterling making a run. They'll come to the flag with three to go. Michael Waltrip leading them home. Rusty Wallace looking for his first Daytona win. Here they come to the caution flag. And this could be the race. I don't know there'd be enough time to throw a red flag. As we have three laps to go, caution flies. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. comes across in sixth outside of Mark Martin. Boy, that was some... <laughs> that was some... In the backstretch, a lot of debris. That's a shame. Dave Blaney had a great car all night long. Well, they seven. almost wrecked them all going down into turn one. Got over into turn two over there. A car spun and collected these other cars. It was Ryan Newman, the rookie, who went sideways in the back stretch. And there the track crews are talking to Ryan, trying to help him out. Like you said, Mike, there's no way we can stop this race. You'd have to stop it right now, and there's no way to do that. Jeff Green, based on what I've seen, I, I, I would be ill-advised if they did. There's Newman out of the car, taking off the uh, support, the Hutchins device. We are hearing that they will not throw a red flag. They'll be coming to two to go, so this race is going to end under caution, it looks like. And NASCAR's policy on red flags is they will only red flag the race if they have enough laps to clean up the incident get the race restarted, and in this case, they do not. You almost have to have about four or more to go before you can do that. I'm not going to say anything, because we still got a couple laps to go here. It's never over till it's over. But once Dale Earnhardt Jr. got up alongside Michael Waltrip and Rusty Wallace dropped underneath, the game was afoot. The first save was Todd and Jeff Bodine, here the two come. brothers right there. This is, there they go. Now, it looks like they're going to wreck here. They save it. That's Newman outside them, I believe. Come down into... I think Darrell... Ryan like, Newman had a tire yeah. smoking. I yeah. believe he had a here tire go, go, go down There's right a good there. shot. He, I think that the... Here you go. They get into it right there. That's going to cut down a tire, I guarantee you. Left rear tire. They go off in the corner. You're going to see a little smoke here now, I believe. See yes, there it is. There it is. A left side tire going that down. That thing's going to blow the left rear tire, and it's going to spin off the corner over here. There it goes. Caught Caught the side of the 21. That went to 29. Oh, that 19 just squeezed through. There's a lot of cars just squeezed by right there. Of course, Dave Blaney, the 77, is one that did not. And you can see that the left rear tire is down and off the wheel. That's what made him come around right there. He gets in the side of Elliott Sadler, the 21. Looks like, you see, the tire lets go completely right here, and it comes around then. Let's ride with Jeremy Mayfield. That's Newman right in front of him. He's got to see the smoke, and that's just a, he doesn't, now he sees him spin. Can't see anything right there. 
squeezes by. If you can see the other side of his car, that was close. Because you just don't know which way he's going to go up there as he come up on the back stretch. And all season long, and right here especially, I've got to give an attaboy to our cameramen, our tape operators, our replay producers for being able to share all of these images with you instead of all of us wondering what happened. Great, great job, fellas and girls. And thanks for all of it. That's Buffy, uh, Michael's wife. And she's just like I am. She's not going to say anything yet. They will be coming to the white flag this time, being waved along with the caution flag. And, Darrell, it wasn't but about two and a half months ago, everybody was saying Michael Waltrip's out of this race car. You just look at the runs he's had the last month and a half, and he's about two and a half miles away from getting his second career win, first win of 2002. I have never seen him, I've, ever since he's been racing, I've never seen him drive better. You know, his first win, Darrell, he didn't get a fair chance to celebrate here at Daytona. His victory marred by... The tragedy of losing Dale Earnhardt, his car owner and benefactor. Michael didn't get a proper celebration then. He will tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, say what you want to about tonight, but he had the dominant car. Uh, he did a great job uh, right there at the end. Uh, looked like I didn't know what was going to happen, and uh, he held on, and uh, he's coming home a winner. And, uh, yeah. Well, he did just what Joe Nemechek did last night to win the Bush race. He ran the bottom of the racetrack the whole race long, had the lead, and if you were going to beat him, you'd have to beat him the long way around on the outside. You're riding with him, aren't you? Well, I can't think about, I can't help but think about when we were here last. Which was February a year ago. He won. He went to victory. Sure, That's right. But... Uh, is a day that we'll, none of us will ever forget. Here we are back here for the first time since then. First Our time Fox race. has been back. First time Fox has been back since then, and he wins again. Uh, I'm proud, I'm so proud of him. That's it. What a great job tonight. He grew up wanting to be a race car driver, wanting to follow in your footsteps, but that was no easy path for Michael. No, he's, he's we're, we're, gener we're a generation apart. Uh, I'm more like a father to him. And you know what sons and sons and fathers, uh, you know, he doesn't listen to me very well. <laughs> he, uh, he, he and I have a great relationship, but it's different than, uh, than if we were closer together in age. But I tell you, Dale Earnhardt owned this racetrack, finally got that Daytona 500 win. Looks like DEI is starting to own this place. <laughs> Five of the last seven restrictor plate races here. Wait, here he comes to the flag. Michael Waltrip wins the Pepsi 400. All right, way to go, buddy. <laughs> Rusty right, Wallace, second, Sterling Marlin, Jimmy Spencer, Mark Martin, the top five. Boys, you got to be back here in February. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, love, I, I love seeing him win a race. I mean, it's a great thrill. Slugger Labby is crew chief. And, and we heard Matt Yoakum talk about it, getting his first career win as a crew chief. Wins the cup win. But, uh, gosh, I don't know. Fellow uh, guy like me, I don't know. I can take too much more of this or not. <laughs> Steve Burns. All right, thanks, Mike. Another win for DEI, and your first win as a crew chief slugger. What does it mean to you? What an awesome feeling. I just told Michael, I've been chasing this dream for 18 years, and, man, it took my dad to, to show me what a half-inch wrench was. I didn't know nothing. And uh, my dad, I tell you, all, all of him and uh, Dick McCabe and Kelly Moore back home for giving me the chance to do this, and uh, Teresa and Ty and Steve Mill and Richard Gilmore, and Michael Walter. You know, I mean, a lot of people didn't believe in Michael, and I did. I left a good team to come work for DEI and, and Michael, and uh, man, it's just an awesome feeling. Slugger, how have you guys turned this team around? Hard work, man. We cut everybody off over the winter. We totally restructured the whole 15 team. All them guys back in the shop. I want more of that. I want more. That felt uh, good, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, just everybody, man, at DEI for sticking behind me and and Stiffy and, and Pops down there and Paul Andrews. I mean, we work good together and none of this is possible without everyone at DEI. And it's just, it's an awesome feeling. Go celebrate in victory Thank lane. you, appreciate it, man. A lot of good stock car racers come from the state of Maine and Slugger Labby is one of them. Well, what Michael told me over and over again, he said, I love Slugger. He believes in me. And Larry, you know, Jeff knows, when the crew chief and the driver, when they believe in each other, there's no stopping you. Exactly. Time to mess up all that pretty paint in the infield, I think. 
Let's see. I don't know now. It's pretty muddy out there, bud. Let's be careful. Get over here and tear up the good stuff. Don't just get, <laughs> get on in there and get some of that good stuff. And one year ago, he was out in that grass celebrating the win for his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now he's out there celebrating his own race team. Out now. Don't get stuck in there, Mike. No, We've got no. a lot of rain here. Yeah. Get that thing out of there. Go on, Victor Circle. Well, that's a long way to Victory Lane. Hello. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's the second career points victory for Michael Waltrip, who also won the non points Winston All Star race. And Whoa. we will talk to him in Victory Lane. We're the only brothers that's won the Daytona 500 and the Winston. But now he's done something I never did. I never won this race. 